Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second session of the Intergovernmental Meeting, Day 4. We are coming to the end of our journey. We have covered all but the, seven, the last 17 paragraphs of the preamble. Looking back at the road we have traveled, to me, it is clear how we managed to achieve this success. A common sense of purpose has shown the light when our discussion seemed to be headed towards an impasse. An ample time, we have a lot for ourselves, we also instrumental for our success. We could discuss, debate, calibrate our views, accommodate our differences, and arrive at an agreement on the language of this instrument without the pressure of time. Equally significant, I believe, was the structure and the process that we agreed upon to guide our delibera deliberations toward a productive outcome. During the first session in April, we agreed to be guided by a set of principles as the criteria for proposing amendment to the original text. We did our best to make sure that the proposed changes were, first, of high importance for the countries. Second one, focusing on the substance of the recommendation, avoiding technical explanations or stylistic changes. Three, no watering down the recommendation as it's already non-binding instrument. We need to preserve its effectiveness. Lastly, avoiding issues that were already debated or issues that might be addressed elsewhere in the text. I think that the time has proven us correct in choosing this criteria as our guidance. As recently as yesterday, we were discussing the paragraphs of the preambles. We witnessed that adhering to the framework facilitated compromise, cooperation, and consensus. As a chair of this intergovernmental meeting, I have been fully committed to the fundamental principle that member states decide on the amendment that uh, decide on the amendment they want to be, they want to table and that every member state is equally entitled to voice their positions fully my commitment to this fundamental principle will not waver throughout our meeting you can count on that we have seen time and again that when we all express our viewpoint and we will take time to listen to each other we were able to to come together to support UNESCO's important role in the AI domain. There is no other institution dealing with this ethics for this technology and it will, it will be recognized around the globe. So, with this realization, let us continue the consideration of the text of the recommendation where we left yesterday. That is paragraph 11 of the preamble. I would like to ask the Secretariat, please, read out the paragraph so we can have an interpretation in all six languages. I would like now to open the floor for debate after we're reading the amendment. So paragraph uh, PP11, as amended, reads as follows. Recognizing that the development of AI technologies, UK strike results in an increase of information which, and, and continue, necessitates a commensurate increase in Canada amendment data, media and information literacy, as well as access to UK amendment independent, pluralistic, trusted sources of information, UK, including as part of efforts to mitigate risks of misinformation, disinformation, and hate speech, Canada, and harm caused through the misuse of personal data. Then there is another amendment to the same paragraph that will read as follows, recognizing that the development of AI technologies results in an increase of information which necessitates a commensurate increase in media and information literacy, as well as access to critical sources of information, Iran amendment, and responsibility, accountability of digital platforms and transnational corporations to states which cannot be met without cooperation on and access to sciences, technology and innovation in order to mitigate risks of misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, amendment by Iran also, hostile propaganda and interference in the internal affairs based on religion. Thank you. So I'll give the floor to the UK followed by Canada, then Iran. UK, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, our amendments in this paragraph were, I, I suppose, in some ways stylistic, but, but in, in an effort to sort of clarify the substance. We felt that in a few places, um, 
sort of assumptions were made that weren't necessarily correct. So I think in the in the first bit, we didn't feel it was necessary to, to highlight that AI would necessarily result in an increase in information. And, and we thought that was perhaps not the reason why there is a need for greater data, media and information literacy. Um, so that's why we, we struck that part of the sentence. Um, we also um, prefer a, a, a a sort of clearer sort of term for, for what type of sources of information. So we've suggested here independent, pluralistic and trusted um, and a welcome reflections from the room in that regard, if, if that's helpful um, to, to clarify what we really what we really mean there. Um, and then the last part of the edit was largely because we felt that it was a little bit odd to imply an sort of instrumentalization of what of the importance of data media and information literacy of course it is um hugely important to mitigate the risks of misinformation disinformation and hate speech but it's not the only reason why um why it should be promoted in the context of of um ai and and the sort of bigger picture of digital digitalization digital development so um that's the rationale for the for the last edit on the on the paragraph there um I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, UK. I'll give the floor to the dear distinguished representative of Canada. Canada, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair, and hello to everyone. Um, so our rationale for uh, the uh, amendments, uh, we, we'd like to recognize the need for an increased data literacy to understand how an individual is being datafied, how he's being processed and acted upon through their interactions with AI systems. And we believe that these amendments will, will be able, we will be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Iran. Iran. Thank you, Excellency, and thanks again for your hard work and your team. Excellency, the PP11 and uh, focusing on the development of the AI and, and technologies, and the, the uh, proposal of Iran is focusing on the responsibility and accountability of the digital platform that's needed in this, in, in, in this area. And then we fully believe that our comment reach the paragraph as the responsibility and accountability of the of the digital platform is a principle and then their responsibility with other stakeholders it's something that trying to increase the cooperation that mentioned rightly in this in this very paragraph thank you very much excellency thank you thank you iran thank you yunus okay now i'll open the floor for the debate if anyone would like to take the floor and to uh, comment and all the amendment in front of you. Okay, I'll give the floor to Germany, followed by Austria. Germany, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and good afternoon, colleagues. It's a pleasure working with you again. And of course, it's also a pleasure to see us approaching the end of this work. Um, Germany supports the amendments by the UK and Canada. We think um, it makes the texts more precise and it is more, more practical in the terms that it is closer and more specific with regard to UNESCO language and the actual work we're doing. Um, we do, however, not support, unfortunately, the amendment by Iran, where we do understand that the point in, included in it is, is, is absolutely relevant it is of such a technical character and, and really goes beyond the grasp of this paragraph that it should only be included as it is already um, in practical terms in the text of the recommendation where, where these, these things are, are very clearly set out. However, um, the, the whole aim of this paragraph for us is a different one and we should not want to meddle with the substance. So um, um, support for the UK and Canada, unfortunately not for Iran. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to Austria, followed by France. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good afternoon to all. Um, also happy that we are basically now um, sort of in the final lane and hopefully wrapping up soon. Um, thanks to all for, for uh, great cooperation so far. Um, I can be very brief in the sense that I fully support what my um, distinguished colleague of Germany has said. The, the, the 
um, preamble of paragraph 11 is about um, key work that UNESCO does that is working, uh, uh, well, first of all, um, uh, promoting media information literacy um, and working against misinformation and disinformation. Um, the the uh, amendments uh, introduced by UK and Canada echo very much what, um, what we've been um, saying within UNESCO uh, for the last 10, 20 years. Uh, so there is an added value. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that the Iranian uh, amendments introduce uh, um, a context that is just not appropriate here. Um, as I said, we're talking here about media information literacy and how to counter misinformation and disinformation hate speech. We're not talking about um, accountability of, of, of digital platforms and the wording, and we're certainly not talking about interference in the internal affairs based on religion, which is um, quite incomprehensible to me. And hostile propaganda is just never, ever been used in, in our context, and I don't even understand it fully. So I'm afraid, with all due respect to the distinguished um, uh, delegation of Iran, we cannot by no means accept, unfortunately, their amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austria. I'll give the floor to France, followed by Brazil. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Good afternoon, Chair. Good morning, dear colleagues. Chair, I can't express better what has already been said by my German and Austrian colleagues. Chair, we support the amendments put forward by the United Kingdom. Uh, et nous soutenons, évidemment and we support the amendments of Canada, which uh, focus on the fight against hate speech. These two amendments, in our view, Chair, are fully in line with our strategy, goals and actions, as well as the language that we use within the UNESCO setting. However, the proposal for the amendment put forward by the Islamic Republic of Iran is not only, in our view, incomprehensible in terms of its logic in this paragraph, but it's also counterproductive, and we strongly oppose it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, France. I'll give the floor to Brazil. Mayra, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to, to everyone. Um, Brazil is very happy to, to be here in this last, uh, last phase of our meetings. I hope we can, we can have a very productive day today, too. And uh, regarding the, the amendments that were proposed, uh, we tend to agree with what was said previously. Uh, I think uh, this paragraph is referring specifically to to media and information literacy, which is one of the one of the activities, one of the programs of UNESCO. So this is already a line of action that uh, is well established here, and uh, so and, and we think that the, the amendments proposed by the UK and Canada they 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 improve the paragraph and they are very uh, in line with the with UNESCO's activities in this field. Uh, we do understand the, the, the concerns raised by, by Iran, and we do agree with them. But uh, we also believe that this is not a place to, to, to mention it here, because like, for the same reason that I just said, because we are talking about media and information literacy, and here they are, they are talking about uh, responsibility, accountability of digital platforms, which is another thing, and which, uh, in my opinion, was already uh, addressed uh, in the in the recommendation, in the operational part of the recommendation, so we would prefer to 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 stay with the the amendments proposed by the UK and Canada, but not with the, the Iranian one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me reflect what's in the chat before I give the floor to the dear representative of Mexico. First, I have in the chat that supporting the UK and Canada, only the UK and Canada, Namibia, Australia. Morocco, Andorra, Tanzania, Lithuania, Italy, Netherlands, Malaysia, Greece, Singapore, Iceland, Algeria, Czech Republic, and Finland. 
Poland, and Hungary, and also Kuwait. With that, I'll give the floor to the dear president of Mexico, Javier. You have the floor. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Regarding the amendments put forward by the UK and Canada, we believe that they add value to the text. However, we believe that it would be better to maintain in order and not replace it by including as part of efforts. We believe that that would weaken the text. So therefore, we prefer to maintain in order. And regarding the amendment proposed by the delegate from Iran, responsibility, accountability, etc. I share the views that were mentioned by other delegates, the fact that it's perhaps not the best paragraph to include these ideas. Perhaps we could look at another area of the preamble where we could include this, Chair. We believe that it's an important concept that we should mention in some part of the preamble. If we could seek a solution in this direction, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mexico. Okay, I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Morocco, followed by Cuba, Al Maghrib, Tafadali. Shukran. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to all of my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Morocco's sound is cutting out, says the interpreter. Uh, First of all, concerning this paragraph, we would like to thank all of the colleagues uh, who have suggested amendments. Firstly, the UK and Canada. We'd like to thank them for the efforts they have made in order to improve the content of this paragraph. Amongst the comments we have about the text in general, we think that it's sometimes heavy and has too many explanations. And there are sometimes explanations of a philosophical nature that lead us away from the main concepts and uh, sometimes take us far away from the original intent and sometimes water down the text so that we lose the original intent. And this is not the way legal text should be drafted because uh, Legal text should be direct and simple and clear. In international law, there are many texts, there are recommendations and other types of legal texts. And we can use them as examples. And if we look at the paragraphs in those texts, we shall see that they are very short and to the point. Because of this, I would like to express my thanks to the colleagues who uh, presented these amendments, especially the UK and Canada. Concerning Iran's amendment, Iran presents an issue which is extremely important and which is uh, a great concern to governments and also to other parties. For example, the interference of multinational uh, corporations, especially those working in the field of technology, which sometimes invest in artificial intelligence more than many governments do, and um, devote great budgets to research and development in this field, and certainly devote more resources than governments do to artificial intelligence. And then this has a very deep impact upon policies, on electoral campaigns, for example, because artificial intelligence is used uh, to influence public opinion and uh, sometimes is successful in doing so nationally and internationally. And uh, there have been examples of this in the last uh, few uh, days 
in the war against Gaza. And we saw that in other events uh, throughout this last year. So it's an extremely important issue. However, I think that the original text with the amendments from the UK and Canada cover what needs to be covered. And also, we talked about the intervention and the role of uh, multinational and transnational companies in many other paragraphs in the text, especially uh, those related to measures that need to be taken by governments. So we agree to the amendments of the UK and Canada, but we do not uh, agree to Iran's amendment. Uh, Thank you very much, Morocco. That will be Cuba. Good afternoon, Chair. Thank you for giving me the flair, uh, the, chore, the, fla the floor apology. We also support the amendment put forward by the UK and Canada. And we thank them for putting these amendments forward. We b believe that they improve the text. However, we agree with Mexico regarding the amendment put forward by the United Kingdom. Perhaps we should maintain in order. Because the proposal to change it to including as part of efforts, we believe would weaken the text. So therefore, we prefer to retain in order to. Regarding the rest of the amendments, we could accept the paragraph as it stands. Now, when it comes to the amendment put forward by Iran, as was expressed by the distinguished representatives of Morocco and uh, Morocco, we understand the importance of this proposal and we understand the rationale behind this amendment. However, we believe that perhaps we could look for another paragraph in which we could include this to ensure that uh, we can find a more agreeable solution in another paragraph. This is particularly concerning the First Amendment of Iran. Now, the second part of the amendment, we believe is slightly more difficult to understand. But we could support keeping the First Amendment if we could find a consensus. We could use it perhaps in, an, in a different paragraph. We share and we understand the concern of Iran. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Okay, I see some member state they are when I don't want to weaken the the text of the paragraph. They are more, you know, with their all, all, I mean, they're okay with all the UK and Canada except striking an order. So let me go back to the uh, the UK and ask them if they are flexible to revoke that amendment and keeping an order. Thank you, Chair. Um I think here we, I think I would probably disagree that, well, the intent behind the edit was not to weaken. I think what we were trying to get at here was that um, data, media and information literacy, if we, if we start using the Canada Amendment, are essential from a broad point of view, um, given the developments that are happening in, in AI. Um, and rather than only specifically for mitigating risks of misinformation, disinformation, and hate speech. We felt that was actually rather narrow as, um, as a sort of reason to increase media and information literacy. Um, we don't feel strongly about it, but it is our view that actually the, the previous version was weaker rather than stronger. Um, so I just wanted to, to give that clarification, but we, we can be flexible, but that's, that's our point of view that actually this version is, is stronger rather than weaker. Thank you. Thank you. I see would like to take the floor. I'll give the floor first for the one who did not take the floor, which is Greece, followed by France. Sophia, you have the floor. Yes, Excellency. Uh, thank you. 
Um, we would like to support the UK in this. We do believe that uh, um, uh, that in order to mitigate is much weaker and much more restricted, um, including as part of uh, is quite broader and makes a better text in uh, in our view. Thank you. Thank you, Greece. I'll give the floor to France. France, you have the floor. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Just as our Greek and uh, UK colleagues just said, we've often had the feeling when discussing various amendments, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the intent of uh, these amendments was to weaken the text, to make it more porous, open to not being applied. The amendment tabled by the UK as part of we believe that this amendment actually broadens the spectrum of the text and thereby strengthens it. Therefore, we really would like to see this amendment remain in the text. Thank you very much for that proposal. Thank you. I also have in the chat Switzerland supporting the UK and Canada, Spain and Tunisia, Ireland, St. Vincent. Okay, so with that, can I see in the text with the UK and Canada? Uh, let me ask our colleagues from Iran if they can show flexibility and accept the text that's in front of us without their amendment. Do I have the floor, sir? Yes, go ahead. Uh, dear Mr. President, the, um, some of the perceptions that we have, I think there is somehow contradictory. We elaborated this uh, part of this paragraph, which emphasizes on the access to critical sources of information. Who are these sources? Who are the owners? Are they authentic? Are they not? Are they responsible? Are they accountable? We have asked so many questions concerning the access to critical sources. And what we have put forward is nothing just asking for the responsibility and accountability. I don't know how it is not in the spirit of the paragraph. And concerning the last part, we can revoke those parts because we have hate speech at the end of the day. And concerning the UK amendment, independent pluralistic trusted instead of critical sources which still we think is an Im important emphasis you have seen during the pandemic what happened with the whole population of the world concerning infodemics but uh, we still prefer to have one tweak to the amendment of the britain to show uh, we can come be in line with the text, and that is authentic. Independent, pluralistic, authentic and trusted sources. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Iran. But again, I'm reflecting on the floor and I see all member states are okay with the text in front of me. So again, I appreciate your input and also appreciate your flexibility, Iran, is to go with the consensus and to approve paragraph 11 as it's seen, where I see there is no appetite to do any changes from the floor. With that, I thank all member states for their flexibilities. And I say preamble paragraph 11 as approved on the screen. And now we go to preamble paragraph 12, please. So 12, there's an amendment by the UK to delete it completely. And then there is another amendment by Germany that will read as follows. Observing that the normative framework for AI technologies and its social implications finds its basis in Germany's track ethics, international and national legal frameworks, human rights and fundamental freedoms, Germany put ethics here, need for access to data, 
information and knowledge, the freedom of research and innovation, human and environmental and ecosystem well-being, and connects ethical values and principles to the challenges and opportunities linked to AI technologies based on common understanding and shared aims. Thank you. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Germany. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, I think in this case, uh, originally we felt that this was maybe a little bit repetitive and, and we also had some concerns that ethics was sort of being placed at a higher level than um, international law. Um, but we are, we are very happy to withdraw and work with, the Germany, uh, with Germany's amendment. Thank you, UK, for the flexibility. Could we remove the UK's amendment? And I'll give the floor to the Germany to elaborate removing ethic from the upper and bring it on the lower part of the sentence. Germany. Katrina. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will explain quite briefly, and this is exactly the point I referenced to by my British colleague. Um, in this enumeration, we felt it is, from a technical, purely technical perspective, important to keep the right rank of, of, of things we are referencing. And international and national legal frameworks, these are the binding frameworks that exist. Um, human rights and fundamental freedoms are part of it, but also supplementary to it, depending on, on which legal school you come from. Ethics, however, is, is not a legal concept. It is something that is around or below, but from a legal perspective, certainly it is, it is below, it's part of it. And then we come to needs. And, and this is really need, a need is something that is something as from a category that is entirely different. So we feel, felt the right place for ethics was behind the legally binding frameworks and before the needs. So um, we um, support, we urge colleagues to support this. We felt it is a more logical order. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. Okay. I see in the chat, uh, Greece support, Algeria also, Italy support, the Germany, Singapore, Brazil, UK, uh, Hungary, Finland, Switzerland, Canada, Malaysia, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, France, Latvia, Egypt, Austria, Australia, sorry, Tunisia, uh, Tanzania, Mexico, Czech, Argentina, San Vincent, Kuwait, Slovakia, Slovenia, Burkina Faso, Andorra, Austria, and Cuba, and Saudi Arabia. So with that, I think you know we have consensus on the Preamble paragraph 12, preamble paragraph 12, approved. Let's go to the next one, please. Oh, I have, sorry, as a speakers, I have France, want to speak, and Dominican Republic. France. Oui, merci beaucoup, Monsieur le... Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Indeed, the paragraph has been approved. That's perfectly fine. That's not what we wanted to speak to. What we do want to what we want to do is to flag up the fact that paragraph twelve talks about these international legal frameworks as well as national frameworks. So I wanted to highlight that both international and national frameworks are mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Franz. Dominican Republic, you wanna take the floor? I see none. Okay, can we go to paragraph 13? So paragraph 13, PP 13 has several amendments. I'll read them. So um, recognizing that ethical values and principles can powerfully shape the development and implementation of Singapore strike rights based, continue policy measures and legal norms by providing guidance where the ambit of Canada ad existing norms is unclear or where such norms are not yet in place due to the fast pace of technological development combined with the relatively slower pace of policy and legal responses. Another amendment introduced to the same para. Recognizing that ethical values and principles can, UK ad amendment, build upon but not replace the development and implementation of rights-based policy measures and legal norms by providing additional, amendment by UK, additional guidance, and the rest is deleted. 
Another amendment to the same para introduced by Iran, recognizing that ethical Iran amendment and moral and value-based and pr principles and principles can powerfully shape the development and implementation of rights-based and value-based policy measures and legal norms by providing guidance where the ambit of norms is unclear or where such norms are not yet in place due to the fast pace of technological development combined with a relatively slower pace of policy and legal responses. Thank you. So I'll give the floor to the Singapore, Canada, UK, and Iran to elaborate on their amendments. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, since it's the first time I'm taking the floor, I do want to congratulate you that you successfully shepherded us through the valleys and mountains to the end of the tunnel. I'm personally happy and relieved you are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel already. Quite thankful. Uh, for us, uh, Singapore's amendments, because we felt this uh, rights-based policy would restrict the impact of the work we're trying to do. Ethical values and principles that we are developing here should affect or shape actually all the policy measures and legal norms relating to the use of AI and the deployment of AI. So that's the reason why we struck out the, te the text. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Canada, followed by the UK. Canada, you have the floor. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, the amendment here is really to reflect the fact that uh, we should not uh, we should not uh, assume that the, the current norms that we have uh, that there's a gap in the norms that we have, and that in, instead we should ensure that norms that we have are perhaps unclear. And so we we wanted to reflect that in the text by focusing on. Uh, the fact that uh, ethical guidance comes uh, to, is, is supposed to build upon but not replace uh, existing norms. So I see that uh, the UK have, have a similar um, amendment in the text as well. So uh, from our perspective, uh, we would just want to ensure that this is reflected uh, given uh, the, the rest of the conversations we've had throughout the text uh, on that point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Canada. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Iran. UK? Thank you, Chair. Um, and I think um, our, the rationale for our edit here flows from the discussion we had on um, PP12, as well as what my Canadian colleague um, just outlined here. We had some concerns that um, the text as it originally was seemed to suggest that, it seemed to sort of flip the relationship between um, binding norms um, and, and the sort of soft uh, soft law, um, non-binding um, ethical principles. Um, and and then from our point of view, ethical values and principles support, um, provide additional guidance, um, sort of contribute to that overall landscape, but it is not their role to shape legal norms. Um, and we feel quite strongly about that. Um, so, so that's the sort of rationale for the first part of our edit, that it's really clarifying that these are supplementary, but not in any way a replacement for, say, international um, law or, or other sort of binding, um, binding frameworks. We could work with potentially other language. We are we do quite like this um, proposal, but we, we could work with other language, but we we aren't comfortable with the with the terminology of shaping and um, that ethical values would be shaping legal norms. Um, and then in terms of the end of the paragraph, um, we felt that actually the it, the end of the paragraph seemed to sort of imply that um or seem to take for granted that policy and legal responses cannot keep up with technological developments and that that is something that may that cannot and will not change and actually we we feel that it is our sort of responsibility to make sure that our regulatory and policy uh, legal approaches are actually able to um, be agile enough enough to respond and ensure that there aren't these kind of regulatory and um legal uh, or governance gaps so so we felt that it was um sort of in terms of future proofing the document we did we didn't feel comfortable with making the assumption that there will always be gaps that need to be filled by ethics um and and we should make sure that that sort of broader um picture of of other forms of governance actually we sort of challenge ourselves to make sure we are keeping pace with technological developments rather than assuming we will always be behind um so so that's the rationale for, for that deletion we also felt in in general it, it's sort of an issue of description rather than um, necessarily saying something of substance. So um, 
or that was sort of essential to include. But uh, we we are happy to have a discussion and um, welcome comments from the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Iran. Yunus, you have the floor. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the philosophy behind what we have amended to the paragraph, especially this, the, in the third line, and we can, uh, in fact, uh, elaborate it a little bit, that is because uh, the policies for many countries are not just rights-based. And uh, the value-based policies are also a source of inspiration. That is just, we have added this to the text and uh, we think many regional uh, organizations and Islamic countries may have the same case. Thank you, sir. Thank you, dear representative for Iran. Okay, I'll give the floor now to the uh, Austria, followed by uh, Italy, then Kuwait. Austria, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. I'd like to comment first on the UK amendment. Um, I am in, uh, Austria is in full support of um, these amendments um, and would share the same concern as expressed very, very eloquently by my UK colleagues. We had um, several uh, amendments in the preamble and in the operational parts um, that have reflected exactly that. We withdrew it for the sake of um, the methodology that you have proposed to us. But we still feel very strongly, and that was very much, much the message of my intervention uh, in the general debate uh, at the outset of our negotiations, that we, we um, are in strong support for a UNESCO instrument on the ethics of the eye, but we are also in strong support uh, of the position that it's an instrument that complements the, uh, the, the um, the existing human rights uh, framework and doesn't supplant uh, or replace it. Um, and the UK amendment exactly makes that clear. It means that um, this instrument builds upon and doesn't replace. And what we've agreed upon um, during the last weeks in the operational part really reflects that. So it, it clarifies again the relationship between the current um, uh, in international legal framework and, and, and this instrument. Um, and this, just to comment um, why we also felt that it makes sense, the, the UK amendments uh, deleting that half sentence, which reads where the ambit of norms is unclear or norms not yet in place. Um, again, we, we, we have strong feelings um, uh, or our position or we have a strong position uh, that um, uh, to refute any suggestion that the current uh, human rights framework is not fit for purpose. Uh, Austria feels that um, the internationally agreed human rights uh, um, body of law and its principles are perfectly fine to, to deal with um, any situation uh, that arises out of uh, uh, um, the development, design, use of AI technology and suggesting that it doesn't, that the current human rights uh, uh, body of law is unclear or it's not yet in place, we would strongly refute that. So for, for that reasoning, we feel that the UK amendments definitely clarify um, uh, that and we've, throughout the weeks of our negotiations, the room has shared actually that view, it, it was at least our understanding. Um, uh, concerning the, the amendments by um, the distinguished delegation of Iran, um, we would not be able to accept it because it doesn't really um, add any clarity to the contrary. It makes it off, obfuscates, um, I'm afraid, the, the sense and meaning of it. Um, we are a bit more flexible in terms of um, accepting the Singapore Korean uh, amendment because I think then it makes it makes maybe it it it, it does um, alleviate a bit of our concerns. Um, but our preference certainly goes to the UK amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austria. I'll give the floor to the dear distinguished representative of Italy. Thank you, Chair. Um, I strongly support the amendment by UK for two good reasons. One is that uh, uh, according to this amendment, the paragraph is shorter, more clear, sharp, and uh, with uh, the ability of responding of different situations. Okay, we, we know that sometimes 
there is a problem of interpretation and we can have the need for additional guidance. And this is a perfect wording in my view without adding so many uh, details. The other good point of this uh, amendment is that it makes uh, this paragraph consistent with the paragraph we have just approved with the amendment by Germany that was in the same sense of the clarifying the relationship between what is law, what is international law, and what is ethics that is very important, but it cannot be seen as a mix, uh, an unclear mix. So this is the reason for supporting the UK amendment. And this is also the reason, without going into details, for not accepting uh, Iran amendments, because it makes unclear, again, the relationship between uh, ethics. Thank you. Thank you, Italy. I'll give the floor to Kuwait, followed by Australia, then Morocco. Uh, thank you for giving uh, the floor. Uh, Kuwait actually uh, would like uh, and prefer the, the original uh, context. And if uh, uh, among among all the amendments, uh, we are fine uh, going with the UK uh, amendment, the first one, without striking out the, the remaining. Thank you. Thank you, Kuwait. I'll give the floor to Australia, followed by Morocco. Thank you, Chair. Um, like others have said, we, we also strongly support uh, the UK's edits in this paragraph, especially uh, the suggestion uh, to uh, include build upon but not replace uh, the development and implementation of rights-based policy measures and legal norms and to remove powerfully shape. Uh, we also support the proposal to delete the end of the paragraph, um, but the first edit is, is the most important to us. Um, like um, Canada and Austria have said that um, ethical guidance really should build upon but not replace norms. Uh, also agree with Italy that, that it would be shorter and sharper to, uh, to adopt these edits. Uh, we can also support Canada's edits. Um, however, we do not support um, the edits by Iran and Singapore. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. I'll give the floor to uh, Morocco, followed by Algeria. Fatma, to Fadali. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First and foremost, regarding the ethics of artificial intelligence, and uh, contrary to what we already know, contrary to the wording of legal instruments, in our view, this principle has not been clearly defined. The way we see it, the ethics of artificial intelligence is something that's open to discussion from a philosophical, from an ethical standpoint. We need to agree on a unified principle, on a single principle. And this is why our discussion of uh, this recommendation is useful. It's helping us to tease out these principles. In any event, we can accept the text as it stands despite uh, the number of differences of opinion we have, which we'd like to realize by seeing some things deleted. You see, human principles, ethical principles, even principles and values, which are already known and enshrined in international law, including international humanitarian law, they're not very clear. This is why all of these foundations, the, the, these principles, well, when we're applying them or implementing a recommendation or a law of some sort, that's why we then refer to codes. So on that point, I think it's worth uh, referring to an eminent legal scholar who called on us uh, to apply law as less as necessary, as it is necessary. And it is 
for that reason that we do need to mention the various discrepancies between ethical rules and uh, legal rules. This is something we've seen. Something we've seen, for instance, when large companies apply international law or certain provisions contained in international law. That's the first thing. Turning now to Iran's proposal, it does not clarify the point. On the contrary, we cannot accept this addition to the recommendation because what we want to do is to clarify the situation instead of introducing confusion. As for the proposal tabled by the UK, I think that this proposal is clearer. And on that note, what I can add is that uh, we like that proposal very much and we support it. Then, Brazil. Ahmed? Uh, Thank you very much. You all. Um, concerning these uh, suggested amendments, though the original text seems fine, um, we are willing to support um, the, sugge the amendment by Singapore and by Canada, um, especially by Canada, which makes it more precise. Concerning the amendment that is put forward by UK, uh, I'm surprised reading it that the first part, built upon but not replaced, somehow seems to give a completely different meaning from what is originally said in, the, in this uh, paragraph. Uh, originally, it says that ethical values and principles can shape the development and implementation of rights-based policy measures. Now, what we get is 180 degrees from the original statement, namely now it says ethical values and principles can build upon. So here we're talking about building upon uh, the, the, the laws and so on, while originally we were saying shaping the development and implementation of rights-based policy measures and legal norms. So I'm surprised we're changing completely the meaning of the, um, uh, of the text here. So uh, I'm afraid we do not support the, uh, the first part. Uh, we, we may find adding the word additional before guidance as being um, uh, accurate uh, uh, here, but we do not support removing the second part, the, the, the last part of the sentence, because here we are in the preamble and it is um, talking about situations where um, because of technological developments, which can be uh, fast paced, um, there may not be norms or there, there may be some lack of clarity uh, at, at a certain point. This is what, what the text is talking about. And I do not think that this second part should be removed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Algeria. I'll give the floor to the next speaker, which is Brazil. And also, if you have also to elaborate on the Algerian while you are discussing the other am amendments, Brazil. Uh, sorry, I think I, I lost a little bit the last part of the oh, Algerian what I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying, Sorry, what I'm saying, you can elaborate on the amendment and also the point of view of Algeria with the UK's uh, addition. Uh, yes, uh, so I think, uh, unfortunately, I lost the end of his, of his intervention. But uh, in any case, I'm going to comment what I heard. Uh, I, I do totally agree with him regarding the first part. I think actually the British amendment completely changes the, the meaning of this paragraph. And we, we, were not, we are not ready to support it because uh, I do think that logically it, the ethical values are the ones who actually are the basis of uh, developing laws and, and norms uh, in the national and the international context. Every time a constitution of a country in general is like uh, is a reflection of the values of this society. So, of course, values and principles are are, are the basis of that. And uh, at the same time, I, I, I do not think that uh, uh, the, the it, it 
that this from the original formulation of this paragraph is actually in contradiction with the fact that this is just a recommendation which has no no legal value is not legally binding because in my opinion the formulation is already very soft you know it actually says that values in principles can shape the development of legal norms it, of course it's not saying that it's going to substitute or is going to act as legal norms it's just saying that it can shape and uh, and is already saying that in the last part of the, the phrase that it provides guidance where there are no, when there are no, no norms. So uh, I really don't see any contradiction between the, this paragraph and the fact that this recommendation is not my binding. Uh, we were actually very happy with the original paragraph. And uh, so we would, would not support the amendments proposed by the UK. We could live with the amendment proposed by Canada. Uh, we would not accept uh, the amendment proposed by Singapore, and uh, and um, nor the, the the amendments proposed by Iran. So, uh, for us, honestly, we, we would prefer to to come back to the original paragraph. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. I'll give the floor to Poland, followed by France. Good morning, Mr. Tri. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Thank you for the floor. Uh, we are also happy that uh, the, our journey could be concluded uh, very quick. And uh, because of that, uh, Poland uh, prefers uh, original text, finally. But if we could uh, create and get consensus, we can accept the uh, amendments of Singapore and Canadian, I, I say, say very quickly, but uh, the most important amendment here is um, uh, UK amendments. Uh, Poland d d d d d don't support this for many reasons, <clears throat> because uh, uh, especially in uh, we create now and uh, ethical framework and uh, maybe it was only for my delegation, for the delegation, uh, we tried to mention that it's a question zero if we talk about um, um, uh, contradiction between ethics and the, uh, the, the coverage of uh, human rights treaties. And, uh, and even uh, lo local national law has, a, uh, many, uh, has many uh, gaps. Uh, and if, uh, if that recommendation could inspire the, the uh, states to create some norms uh, on the basis of, of that ethics, that kind of call uh, could be uh, realized. And because of that, we prefer uh, to have uh, the last expression uh, in that paragraph uh, deleted uh, after, after suggestion of, of UK. And uh, as, as our colleague uh, from the Algeria um, said, we support that expression and we support the Brazilian uh, talk um, with this. And uh, referring to the uh, Iranian amendment, it is very important uh, to, um, to rather argue uh, oppositely because moral means individual and this is very difficult that we will uh, finally um, uh, scale the very individual morality to the uh, ethical and even global uh, um, morality. It is very um, uh, philosophical um, doctrine that ethic, ethics is among us. It's not a very uh, individual uh, way of living and way of uh, behaving. And because of that, we co could not support that uh, moral addition. Um, but of course, we uh, support the, the individual development of, of people on, on their morality and on freedom uh, of uh, existence and, and expression. Thank you very much. Thank you, Poland. I'll give the floor to France, followed by Germany, then Mexico. France? Merci, Monsieur le Thank you, Chair. I'll be very brief. We rather agree with what was eloquently expressed by our Algerian colleague and which was also mentioned by Brazil. We do not support the amendments put forward by the United Kingdom, nor those proposed by Singapore. Unfortunately, Although, as mentioned by our colleague from Morocco, it seems to make the text shorter and more operational, this isn't the case. It actually moves away from the uh, sentiment that we're looking for here. And likewise, we don't support the amendment put forward by Iran either. 
Now, to clarify, when our text states recognizing the value, the ethical values and principles, which values are we talking about here? We're not talking about individual national values, but rather values that are at the basis of our multilateral system that we all adhere to, or at least our states do officially. And uh, human rights are based on these values. If the text is modified uh, to include moral and value, this introduces a form of rel relativism Moral may not be the same uh, depending on the country. There are differences. And uh, if we include this, this would move us away from consensus. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Germany, followed by Mexico. Germany. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will try to move from the different sides of interventions we've had towards a a proposal of compromises, because I think that our positions are not irreconcilable, however, that we just need to work on the wording and we should probably start it in the interest of, of our own time. Um, as, as our Italian colleague has pointed out, one concern that we share with the UK is that the rank between ethics and law is not mixed up. So um, that is why we have some sympathy for the UK amendment. At the same time, we see the Algerian point and that was supported by Brazil, that this is in fact, it's a two way street. Of course, ethics are one of many elements that help um, develop and inspire laws. So maybe we could work um, on the wording in the first part and say, can build upon and help develop. So we would, but not replace. That would be, would be covering both elements. It would cover both sides and it would show that, that at the same time, while ethical values build on international law, they can at the same time inspire and help develop um, law in the face of technical developments, which is what this paragraph means to, to, um, means to convey. That's the first point. Um, I think the rights-based part is, is largely covered by the argument um, of my, my French colleague. Um, this is about um, the, the international law context and something that we have well established throughout the text, so um, we can not support the, the Singaporean amendment. Um, additional guidance is certainly useful, however, it would be a pity to lose the part um, with regard to the sense that says that indeed technology is very fast and sometimes lawmaking can be quite slow. So maybe we could just shorten the end and say by providing additional guidance with a view to the fast pace of technological development, full stop. And that would be maybe a compromise solution if colleagues could um, look at this. Uh, no, technological, not economic development. Exactly. So that would, would be what I have read from an, of what, how I would interpret a member state's position. And maybe we can find some middle ground. We don't, we're not very much attached to the specific wording, but we would suggest that this is a direction where we can find compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to Mexico, followed by Finland. Thank you, Chair. In our view, this paragraph is a very important one within the preamble because it addresses the goal of the recommendation, which is the ethics of artificial intelligence. As was mentioned by our colleagues from Brazil and Algeria, we prefer the original text because the amendments here would completely change the meaning of the paragraph. We have to put things into uh, context. We're not saying that ethics is a source per se of law or that it can replace laws, but that it can guide and shape law. Although we prefer the original text, we believe that the amendment put forward by Canada to add existing norms is more in line with reality because norms adapt probably at a slower pace than technology but they do adapt and evolve so we believe that existing is a valuable addition so to conclude chair we support the original text with the amendment of canada thank you 
Thank you, Mexico. I'll give the floor to Finland, followed by the UK. Finland, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sorry, the sound, your sound, uh, when, when there's an interpreted, interpreted part of text, then, then when you come back, that doesn't always, uh, I can't always hear that. Um, thank you, and thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues, again. Um, I think the Germany proposal is, is uh, putting us towards uh, consensus. I feel that that's, uh, that's a very, those are very good proposals. Um, this paragraph, uh, we read it as, as being the, uh, one of the motivations for our, our kind of um, paragraphs that uh, emphasizes how important it is that we have this recommendation. Um, it is it is speaking to about the fast pace of technological development and and the fact that uh, our legal um, system uh, is is partly playing catch up uh, often, even though how no matter how agile we. We, we want to make it and, and and therefore the ethical values and principles that we hopefully within this recommendation as we have been agreeing them globally uh, that's an invaluable tool then uh, in in in, that, in those kinds of cases where uh, we have technological leaps but uh, the legal system is still kind of uh, catching up or 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 is is uh, um, is maybe lacking uh, in some places where completely new areas of uh, innovation are opening up. Um, th therefore, this is a key paragraph, as, as my Mexican colleague just uh, pointed out. Um, and and uh, here it's important to, to, to kind of keep the text quite, uh, quite clear. I feel that especially the Germans, uh, uh, our German colleagues, uh, final uh, addition helps so we don't want to have like a long thesis on 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 the different bases of legal and, and technological uh, developments but that that uh, it's important that we we point out that 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 one of the reasons why we're talking about ethical values um here is is the fast pace of techn technological development um i would also comment on on the singapore uh, proposal uh, I feel there, and and then also the the proposal by 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 my esteemed colleague from Iran. Um, I think the rights based and value based here are, are somewhat problematic uh, terms. Uh, I understand that they might might be there so that we would kind of say that you know policy measures and legal norms. Yes, we want them to be rights based, and yes, we want them to be value based. Uh, however, in this sentence, they kind of end up being just. Uh, not not defining or kind of as attributes of, of these, but but as limiting terms. So kind of saying that you know uh, this this uh, thing that we are this preamble or paragraph that we are shaping here is only applied to those policy measures that are rights based, or though only those that are value based. Um, and and therefore maybe we would get a better text by not including either. So so we would support the Singapore um, proposal as well as a way of streamlining it and maybe maybe removing the the term rights based because it's here it's not talking about um it, it's not we have human rights based and we have human rights mentioned many times in this document and here it's just it's, it is just kind of a qualifier for policy measures uh, so maybe when we leave it out uh, people are a little bit uh, more relaxed about uh, talking about the relationship between ethics and and legal frameworks after that uh, thank you mr chair Thank you, Finland. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Jamaica. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, I think uh, I just wanted to come in to, to say that we would be able to support the, the Germany compromise here. And um, we think this is a, a sort of helpful way to take this discussion, um, as, I, as I can see that there is some disagreement here. Um, I do understand colleagues that, that are uncomfortable with, with the fact that we were sort of flipping um, the uh, flipping the, the the concept of power of ethics shaping um, the rights based policy measures and legal norms into the other direction, um, and and as I said at the beginning, we we can be flexible with the language, but we but we do have um, we we really cannot work with with the original formulation of powerfully shape because it it just it takes it too far in, 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 in an extreme direction to suggest that for us to suggest that um, 
ethical values would have a would have a sort of status above and and beyond that of of the legal norms. Um, and from a sort of human rights based perspective, this is also a concern that was really raised with us from from civil society that that we didn't seek to in any way kind of undermine the existing international human rights law based um, system and and the, and the importance of, of rights based approaches um, sort of being a, still being a priority. So so that was um, that's the rationale for that 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 we that we just cannot accept that sort of that very extreme point of view of, of ethics over and above um, legal norms. Um, so, so we think that we can work with the suggestion and, and can work potentially with others um, if, if this does not work for other colleagues in the room, though we, of course we hope it does. Um, but just to explain that, that rationale there, um, we're also very content with, with the addition at the end um, as proposed to reflect on the fast pace of technological development. Um, and I think I, I think I'll leave it there um, at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll give the floor to Jamaica then Brunei. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to um, our UK colleague for the intervention she made just now. I actually think she has made a case for retaining the text unchanged. And perhaps the simple point we need to clarify and the very purpose behind this instrument we are creating is that there is no conflict between ethics and law. Ethics is law's conscience. Ethics is the sea in which law sails. It, it requires a higher standard of behavior than the rules of law. And it is important precisely in the context of fast changing technology and the pacing problem where the hard law usually fails to catch up. And given the exponential nature of artificial intelligence, its transversal effects, the role of ethics then becomes critical and ought not to be uh, diluted. So I would support the original text. I could accept the uh, Canadian um, amendment. As to Iran, Iran has made a very important intervention. Save that it is not necessary to include it in the text because the very nature of AI ethics is the acceptance of standards of right and wrong to guide moral conduct in the development and use of AI technology. So there is no point to adding the, the, the moral dimension that Iran is advocating. It is, it, is, it is inextricably and inherently grounded in the ethical statement that has already been made. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jamaica. I'll give, again, I'm going to give the floor to Brunei, St. Vincent, then Austria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the first time taking the floor, I'd like to just thank you for your strong leadership in bringing us to the very end <laughs> of this process. Um, and we are very grateful for that. If I, start, if I may start by addressing uh, UK's um, first amendment with Germany's uh, uh, modification, uh, I think we can uh, support that. As much as we sympathize with UK's concerns, we feel that Germany's uh, modifications is much truer to the spirit of the paragraph because ethical values and principles can be a valuable reference point from which we can develop, uh, further develop our policy measures and legal norms. Um, as for the second part, we don't have a strong uh, uh, position on that. Of, uh, sorry, but as for the second part, uh, second part of UK's amendment, we don't have a strong position on that, but uh, we are quite open to UK and Germany's uh, uh, amendments for the second part. Now, moving on to Singapore's uh, uh, proposal, um, we agree that rights-based 
uh, the words rights-based here may be counterproductive because the ethical values and principles are already deeply entrenched in human rights va uh, values and principles. Therefore, when it shapes, we would hope it would shape all policy measures and legal norms that it touches upon and not be restricted only to those rights-based policy measures. We feel that would be a mistake because uh, that would be unduly restrictive in its application. Um, thank you very much, Chair. That's all we have to say. Thank you, Brunei. I'll give the floor to St. Vincent, please. You are muted. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, or good morning. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't want to I don't want to repeat what has been said by so eloquently by my colleagues from Jamaica and Algeria. Uh, the proposal of UK is it changing the meaning of the text. And uh, uh, frankly, I would like to see that ethical values and principle principles uh, powerful, powerfully shape the development and implementation of policy measures and legal norms. So uh, my delegation would prefer the original text with uh, the Canadian amendment, but in the spirit of consensus, maybe we can leave with the uh, proposal of Germany saying help to develop. This is my, uh, our position, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, St. Vincent. I'll give the floor to Algeria, sorry, uh, Austria, followed by Algeria then Cuba. Thank you very much, Chair. I also like to um, draw my hat to our distinguished uh, uh, colleague, the, dele the, the distinguished delegate of Jamaica, hugely um, eloquent. Um, I, I would just like to respond to him. What we cannot do today, and never in this instrument, is um, resolve the century old probably millennium old discussion on uh, the, the relationship between ethics and law. I think we all agree in a way, uh, and I think the German compromise has captured the concerns of all of us. What I just like to say is when we don't talk about just the law, when we talk about rights-based, and this is what the UK tried to say, and this is what I was trying to say, and what, that's why I'm pleading to the room to help us out here. It is a firm belief of Austria that the current human rights framework, everything from political to civil to social, economic and cultural rights, everything, and we had this discussion uh, that is also encapsulated in the right to development, everything that uh, is, uh, is captured in the Agenda 2030. It's about quality of life. It's about it's about exactly what we've been talking about. All the ethical values that we've been discussing all the last weeks talk about exactly this, equality, inclusivity, justice, fairness. This is what human rights is about for us. It's about human dignity, and that's a very ethical value. All of these ethical values are, in my view, in Austria's view, uh, encapsulated in human rights. So to suggest that um, this that human rights are unclear or human rights, the existing human rights is not, um, framework is not fit for purpose and should and ethics should supplant human rights is for us a no-go. So, um, but it's a different thing what I think Jamaica wanted to say. So it would, for us, we would, it would really help us to work on the German uh, proposal uh, and maybe even in with the addition of Singapore, something that has been um, very eloquently said by Brunei um, and I think Finland too, um, that it would clarify also that, you know, when we talk about policy measures and legal norms um, uh, or the hard laws, as Jamaica said, should be, should be, should be very much uh, inspired by the ethical values that we've been talking about. But that's a different thing because for us, ethical values cannot inspire human rights. Human rights is, epitomizes what we feel in terms of equality, inclusivity and justice. So, um, and, I, and, and I just would like to plead again also, this is not only a point of view that uh, Austria would like to make, of course, I, I, I just did that case very strongly, 
but we had numerous discussions with the global human rights community and they had this extreme um, worry. I think if we as as if this instrument should also be credible uh, for for civil society at large, and I think we've 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 been all amply in, in agreement that um, that this instrument is firmly grounded in in, in, in existing human rights law, uh, that we should diffuse any any clarity that what we are doing here would ever replace human rights. So um, in sum, if we could work um, on the German proposal. And maybe in addition, uh, with this, use also the Singaporean um, and, 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 and open up a bit uh, the ambit, um, that would help uh, Austria enormously. Thank you very much. And I apologize for being a bit long. Thank you, Austria. I'll give the floor to Algeria, followed by Cuba. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and apologies for taking the floor again. Um, to, to try to, to move forward and, and reach the consensus um, and possibly responding uh, to what the uh, distinguished delegate of Austria has just said. We're not talking about shaping human rights, we're talking about shaping uh, rights-based policy measures. So it's not the rights, the human rights, but the policy measures that are being, uh, that are being shaped by ethics. So I, I would like um, to suggest uh, accepting the second part of the German proposal, and I, and I thank the distinguished representative from Germany for, for the suggested compromises. The second part is much uh, sharper, shorter and sharper, with a view to the fast pace of technological development, which suits the purpose here. However, um, I, I'd go for keeping the first, um, the original text, not the German amendment of the first part, that is keeping the kind of, uh, as, as eloquently explained by the representative from Jamaica, that ethics shape the, uh, the, the, the laws, uh, the policy measures and so on. So I, I would not, we would not accept adding build upon because we are, uh, we are diluting the purpose of, the, the very purpose of this paragraph. So ethical values and principles can shape or powerfully shape or help develop whatever, but there is a, a one-way direction here from ethics towards the uh, the measures that are being developed and, and the legal norms. So I would, to, to summarize, we would go for the second amendment of by Germany, not to the first one, except the Canadian uh, amendment, the word existing, and we are ambivalent with respect to the uh, uh, the, the uh, amendment suggested by Sing Singapore, keeping or removing rights based. Thank you. Thank you, Algeria. I'll give the floor to Cuba, followed by Brazil. Thank you, Chair. We reiterate what was expressed in the chat. Perhaps we don't necessarily need to take the floor, but we reiterate what we expressed in the chat. We support what was expressed by Algeria. We prefer the original text. We could accept the amendment proposed by Canada. And we could also accept the proposal of Singapore. However, the amendment put forward by the United Kingdom, in our view, changes the meaning of the text. We appreciate the amendment proposed by Germany, but we believe that it's also in the same line as what was proposed by the United Kingdom, and therefore we believe it changes the meaning of the text. Perhaps we could continue working to bring it more in line with the original wording, and we could accept the second proposal of Germany. Although we preferred the original text, we can support the second proposal of Germany. Nevertheless, we prefer the original text as for the First Amendment. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cooper. I'll give the floor to the last speaker, then I'll put forward what I'm reflecting from the floor. Brazil. Thank you, Chair, and, and, and thank you, Algeria, for, for presenting uh, 
the same idea that I was going to propose that actually we could maybe just keep uh, well keep the, the the language that Germany proposed for the end of this phrase and uh, maybe we could just delete build upon and the, and keep help to develop that would go more in the sense of the, the original paragraph and uh, at the same time with a much uh, much more mild language so I don't know if that would help and I think uh, because uh, as, as we we express in our first intervention we would prefer to keep the original paragraph and I think many delegations also express that but in the spirit of compromise we can try to to redraft it in, in a way that uh, that is more acceptable for for the other delegations and I think if we we keep just help to develop maybe we are we are already addressing their concerns uh, and in any case I would just like to 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 reiterate that I don't see any contradiction here and um, uh, with the fact that this is, is a non-legal legal binding document I think all the, the text here is very is very already very soft it already says it's just to help to develop or to shape okay powerfully shape maybe it was too strong for, for some for some delegations but at the same time in my opinion is, is only Thing that it can shape is not even imposing anything and uh, yes and, and that's as, as many delegations said before of course uh, we know that values are the foundations of laws uh, that's why uh, some countries don't even have laws written laws because they are just based on tradition and uh, and uh, values principles so i think this is not a, a matter that should uh, really open such a big discussion uh, well in any case that would be my proposal to 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 just delete build upon thank you thank you uh, if australia allow me to wait a little bit i would like to hear from the uh, the chairman of the uh, experts emma are you with us i wanted to elaborate so everyone because i see people are uh, having maybe understanding the paragraph different way as our uh, dear president from algeria said so if emma if you are with us if you can elaborate yes. the rationale yes go ahead please thank you very much chair for the floor um i think um with the utmost utmost respect that um i don't think that every all member states are reading this paragraph um um, in the right way. Um, the, right through the document, and we have to be very clear that also at the end of the document, we state clearly, and this was accepted um, yesterday, that the document should be read as a whole. Right through this document, respect for international law and the need to be in compliance with international law um, are very clearly articulated. It is, however, um, the fact, so it, it, from our point of view, the text of, did not imply that ethics should replace international law. Um, it does, um, if ethics is only to build upon existing law, that's a serious reduction of the domain of ethics actually, because um, ethics cannot do all that international law can do. And it always needs international law and should be in compliance with it, but it can flag ethical concerns and point to areas in need of additional or new legislation because it is agile. It is almost as if ethics, from the point of view of the expert group, is humanity's ear to the ground and international law is the savior. They work together. So if you read the original text, what we can say I mean, yes, maybe we were carried away by saying powerfully shape, maybe we could have said shape, but if we read it again, maybe with emphasis in the right places, if you would allow me, Chair, I know we are in time is of the essence, recognizing that ethical values and principles can shape the development and implementation of rights-based policy measures and legal norms by providing guidance where the ambit of norms and existing as fine is unclear, or where such norms are not yet in place due to the fast pace of technological development combined 
with the relatively slow pace of policy and legal responses. We're not saying that what is in existence should not be complied with or should be replaced by what ethics um, is saying. We are saying ethics flags the need for stricter um, or, if needed, new um, laws. If there are new technologies, there will be a need for new legislation. Um, and it is ethicists' call for the need to protect humanity. Um, that helps to bring this law into place. I, I know this is a very big debate and I'm also not saying that we should choose sides or anything, but the fact that ethics and the law work together and the fact that this is a UNESCO document and the, the, the background of the, of the full document should maybe also um, just be taken in under consideration here. I assure you that the, our, our, our intent has never been to underplay the importance of international law, but only to flag the importance of ethics in addition. Thank you, um, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. Okay, before I give the floor to the next speakers, I'm going to reflect what I hear so far. So can we have, please, uh, keeping the German Second Amendment and Canada? Keep the second German. Yes, keep the second one. Okay. And regarding the first, recognizing the ethical values and principle can help develop with the continuation of the original text. Help to develop. Okay, I think what's in front of us is compromise where, you know, everyone's point of view was included. Again, I'm going to open the list, but please do not repeat what you said, one thing, and try to be as flexible as other members said throughout this document, and not to be, again, stick to your point of view this is you know what that's what we're discussing you know we have over almost two hours to compromise and i think this is try to cover everyone point of view so opening that i'll give the floor to australia australia kuwait uk australia you have the floor 
Chair, thank you very much. And I feel like we're very close uh, to a compromise. I think you captured uh, very well the sentiment in the room with, uh, with these amendments. Uh, I feel that uh, the room was about 50-50 on the original uh, UK amendment. Uh, we then heard a lot of support for the German compromise and I think with your final tweaks, I think we should we should get there. Um, my proposal uh, is was very similar to your compromise, uh, help develop. Uh, I think um, uh, we could also say support the development and improve. Let me see and implement uh, ta -ta, by providing additional guidance. I don't. I didn't hear a lot of uh, objection in the room to that particular. Uh, edit and uh, having that word there uh, would highlight the complementary nature. So that would be my only suggestion, but I think you kept it the sentiment well. Um, the words help develop is, is, is a very important one for Australia. Uh, we would uh, still have a lot of concern uh, with the original uh, wording. I, I respectfully disagree with, with my distinguished colleague from Algeria who mentioned earlier that the sentence uh, is only in relation to policy measures. Uh, it is not because it also refers to legal norms. And, and that is, I guess, uh, where our strong concerns lie. Um, we can't be seen uh, to, to say that ethical values and principles uh, shape uh, legal norms. Um, so therefore, we, we very much endorse your, your compromise proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Australia. Okay, I'll give the floor, please, to Kuwait, UK and France and try to you know, stick with the time, please. Kuwait, you have the floor. Thank you for the floor, uh, Mr. President. I would like to thank the expert, uh, Emma, uh, Professor Emma, for explaining uh, the, the, the viewpoint about this uh, paragraph. After the explanation, we totally agree on the, on the uh, original text. Uh, we feel it's, it's balanced, and uh, we agree that any addition should uh, either uh, add to the to the to the text, or or otherwise uh, shouldn't be considered. And uh, uh, most of the amendments either are uh, limiting, or or uh, uh, changing the the uh, the main. Uh, Purpose of the context. Hence, we well, we strongly uh, support going back to the original text. And thank you. Thank you, Kuwait. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by France. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor, um, and and thank you also for um, for the proposal that you've come up with in, in the first part of the sentence. Um, and I, I agree with my Australian colleague. I think we're very close to um, something that we can all agree on. Um, I also really wanted to thank the expert for, for the explanation. My, and apologies, I, there's some building work next to me. I'm not sure if you can, if you can hear that in the background, apologies. Um, I, we appreciated the, the explanation from the expert. Um, and if I understood her correctly, it sounded as though the intent behind the paragraph was to stress the complementary nature um, and, and the idea that ethics can provide support where there are gaps, but that inherently these are complementary frameworks. Um, from on that basis, um, we, we can work with what's on the screen in front of us, but I would also support what my Australian colleague has said, that it's very important to us to add the term additional in front of guidance. I also did not hear very many, or if any, actually, um, colleagues objecting to the term additional. And for us, it is really crucial to stress that they, to sort of get that point across that it's, it's, it is complementary um, rather than in any way in conflict, which is how I understood the explanation from the expert as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, I think we are we are close to something, but um, hope that that small uh, tweak would also be help would would get us there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to France, followed by Italy, then Mexico. France. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Le... Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on the consensus we're inching closer towards. We do have a, a slight reservation, which we'd like to submit to the room on the first part of the text concerning Singapore's amendment. We want to keep in the paragraph rights-based policy measures and legal norms, because it's clear that uh, what this is referring to and that's why we'd like to keep it in there thank you mr chairman
Thank you, Franz. And in my proposal, I kept the right paste, as it's highlighted. Again, I'll give the floor to Italy and Mexico, but please try not to repeat your point of view. If you are okay with this, I'm trying to move, have consensus, and I think this is reflect what I felt in the room. Not everyone happy, but uh, again, I'll hear Italy, then Mexico. Please, Italy. Yes, thank you, Chair. Very shortly, I fully agree with your proposal. And uh, I agree with uh, Australia in order to the need to add uh, additional guidance, because this is consistent with the uh, help developed and providing help, uh, additional guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Can we reflect that additional guidance? Then again, this is I had three member states. They are OK with this addition. Please, I'll give the floor to Mexico, followed by uh, sorry, Mexico, followed by Brazil, then Morocco. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Actually, we don't support additional because it, it weaks the, the text. Uh, guidance in general is better in our view. Um, for the sake of consensus, we could be flexible and go along with this text, however, I really would like to point out that in our view, of course, that, that uh, this paragraph is the core of the recommendation and that uh, this text is weaker than the original text. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, I'll give the floor to Brazil, followed by uh, Morocco, yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we also don't support adding additional here because I think it would actually again change the, the, the whole meaning of the paragraph. Uh, well, uh, as uh, I think uh, the main uh, <laughs> discussion here is if, if, if laws are built on values or not. I think that, that is the, the discussion that we are having for a long time. Uh, when we, we add this additional here, we are again saying that uh, uh, what comes first is the law, you know? And uh, well, uh, we may even peut-être disagree on that, but uh, I think that, uh, uh, I think that uh, the idea, the original idea of this paragraph was, was to say, where there is no law, where there is no rights or legal norms established, this ethical framework is, uh, can help, uh, or can, can work as a guidance for, for AI actors uh, to, to guide their, 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 their AI developments and use. And I think that's the idea that we should keep here. If we, we, if we add this additional, we are saying that actually it, it, only, it only guides when there is already something else. I don't think it's, it's, it's this the message that we, we want to send. And, uh, and I wanted to repeat what, what my colleague just said uh, from Mexico. From our perspective, we are weakening a lot this paragraph a lot already. This is, we are accepting that because it's uh, for the sake of consensus, because we see that other delegations are not willing to accept the original, even though many delegations supported it. So I'd, Adding this additional word, I think, is, is already too much. You know, uh, we are losing a lot of the text. Uh, even with the second amendment that was proposed by Germany, we are not saying that when there is no legal norms, we should uh, use it as a guidance. All this, this part of the, the text is already lost. So honestly, I think uh, if we add even this other uh, minor word here, we are losing even more of the message, so we would not support it. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Okay, before I continue, here we go. Uh, like, you know, my opening statement, and we've been doing for the last month, we all agreed, you know, not to weaken the text because it's not binding. And, you know, with this additional information, you know, I think, I mean, or the amendment, you know, thus uh, a paragraph it was a bit weakened. So what I now again after hearing, and I'm not going to continue the list. Please, could you strike the uh, word additional? And please, if you don't mind, everyone, if you can lower your hand. 
Could you please lower your hand, everyone? Okay. I just want to hear from who's okay with the text in front of you. I mean, I want to hear, I mean, raise your hand only, raise your hand, not in the chat. I want to see it in front of me. Raise your hand if you are okay with the text in front of you as a compromise. Raise your hand if you are okay with the text. And please make my day easier. Uh, I'd rather give me the yellow color. I like yellow. Give me yellow. Give me yellow. I want to hit the hammer and say yellow color. All right. So as a consensus, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, I thank everyone, everyone for your uh, uh, consensus, flexibility. And you know, just a reminder for, because of some of our colleagues who might did not join us in the intersectional consultations. You know, I thought, you know, we are going fast on the, on the amendments. I assure you that what's happened in the intersessional consultation was exactly what's just happened for paragraph 13. So each, you know, rest and assure all the paragraphs in the text, the 141, went through the same uh, pra practice and same exercise. I thank you all. Paragraph 13 is approved. Next one, please. So PP14, there are several amendments too. Uh, amendment uh, introduced by Canada would read as follows. Convinced that international law, including human rights law, and globally accepted ethical standards for AI technologies, sorry, can play a key role in harmonizing AI-related legal norms across the globe. Another proposal to the same para by Germany would read as follows. Convinced that globally accepted ethical standards for AI technologies, Germany on the basis of international law and the rest remains. And then another one by Iran, same paragraph. Convinced that generally accepted ethical norms for AI technologies and international law, in particular purposes and principle of the United Nations Charter, human rights law can play a key role in harmonizing AI related legal norms across the globe. And then the UK is proposing to delete the paragraph. Thank you. So I have, again, Canada, Germany, and Iran. Canada, followed by Germany, then Iran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, very quickly, uh, we've been working uh, with uh, others on a uh, compromise here, and so we are ready to uh, withdraw our proposed amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Canada. So Canada revoked their amendment, and I think I thank you, Canada, for flexibility. I don't know if the other ones want to follow same thing, but I see the amendment in front of me is from Germany and Iran. And I see in the, so I'll give the floor to Germany, then Iran, then I'll open the floor for discussions. Germany, um, on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, indeed, we have been, we've been working to, to, um, to harmonize or to find a way rather to, to accommodate date, um, different amendments, and most notably the one by the UK, which was to lead the, the, lead the paragraph, um, if I remember correctly, because 
there is no no what no international mandate whatsoever to harmonize legal norms with, reg with regard to AI. It might be politically disadvantageous to to harmonize uh, legal norms, especially within let's say as long as legal norms are ethical, it might be good in fact to have different legal norms in order to to have improvement and to have some competition and to see what works better and what works not. So the mandate for harmonizing AI re related legal norms is something that that was a problem for the UK and that. Germany also saw very critically. Um, our amendment addresses indeed again the relationship between law and, and ethics and is in this way connected to it, um, as is, does the Canadian amendment that was presented. So in this sense we have worked on a compromise proposal which I would be reading out if I may. Um, it takes just one second. It is um, the following. Convinced that globally accepted ethical standards for AI technologies, comma, including uh, on the basis of international law, comma, including human rights law, can play a key role in developing ethical AI related norms across the globe. Uh uh, sorry, so this you want a, a new amendment? It is a merger and a compromise solution between the UK, the Canadian and the German amendment. No, um, uh, sorry. In order to move forward sorry. our debate. Sorry. Well, I can explain ours and I will present it then in 10 minutes when we have had more views. But it is just to, to e make you make our work easier. Thank you. But first, let me hear the member <laughs> say to submit it. Uh, the amendment I have, and I, my apologies, there is, I see also the UK, they have an amendment, so I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Iran, UK. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor, and um, thank you to, to my German colleague for outlining um, what was our concern in this paragraph. So, so we had moved to delete entirely um, on the basis that um, we had some we had serious concerns with the with the terminology of harmonizing AI related norms, legal norms specifically. Um, and and we felt that uh, if we were to sort of amend that, that we might essentially we were striking at the um, we felt that otherwise it was kind of repetitive in any case. So we were we were keen to delete. Um, however, we are happy to work with other delegations um, amendments as long as that element of harmonizing AI related legal norms is also amended. Um, so, so we would, uh, in order to, to, to not be moving for delete, we would be um, suggesting language as um, my German colleague uh, just, just uh, outlined. Um, so it would be to, to amend, um, can play a key role in harmonizing, and it would be changing that for can play a key role in developing ethical AI related norms rather than harmonizing legal norms which we could not accept um sorry the okay but i know your amendment is deleting it so i'm gonna you know go with the accepting deleting or not well we i'm sorry we're trying to be flexible in in working with other delegations proposals but also ensuring that our the element that we had the issue with which is harmonizing ai related legal norms is also addressed so we okay. were hoping to kind of move it forward in that sense okay. um, by, by clarifying to everyone where our, where our difficulty lies. Okay. Okay. So the UK, you know, they are when to delete the whole thing because of that sentence. And they can only work with that sentence. That's so clear? Am I clear the UK, right? Yeah, so we could okay. work with the German edit with additional no, I'm not, edits. Sorry, I'm not going to go to the German edit because it's not there right yet. You know, I, Germany resented, you know, that amendment on the basis. And I want to see if that's going to fly or not. Then I'm going to move to the Iranian amendment. Then I'm going to move is to the, uh, the UK deleting or not. And because of the concern of the harmonized. But I'm not going to introduce a new amendment as a consistent what I did before. So this Chair, is- we would not be able to work with the paragraph at all if that remains in the text, so. So, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, put it this way, the other way. After I hear from Iran, I'm gonna start with the amendment of the UK, is keeping or deleting the, the paragraph. Then we'll see the outcome of that discussion. So, Iran, please, if you, 
elaborate on your uh, uh, amendment, Iran, please. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President, for the floor. Mr. President, uh, our, we withdraw from the second, our second uh, the, the amendment as already reflected in the preamble section. But regarding the first amendment uh, inserted by my delegation, as is, is a factual one, as there is no globally accepted ethical standards yet, so we cannot bring such a kind of paragraph here. So what we have, so we see that at the moment there are different views among countries. And then what we have, it's a generally accepted. And for this reason, we, the, 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 we propose that globally be deleted and generally be inserted of that one. And regarding the standard one, we are flexible regarding that one. We, it, we pose the, the, our proposal and leave it to the room to be discussed. But we can go both with norms and standards yet. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Iran, for flexibility. So, to, so to make the discussion easier, could you please retain standards? So Iran is only concern is with the first one globally, and they want it to have it generally. So keep the standards. OK. So please, anyone would like to take the floor? We have an amendment from the UK deleting because their argument regarding the harmonization, harmonizing. Second thing, you have the amendment of Germany instead of end on the basis of. Thirdly, you have an amendment in Iran where replacing globally to generally. With that, I'll start my list as, as they raise their hand. I'll give the floor to the representative of Central Africa, followed by Russia, then Belgium. Dear representative of Central Africa. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, for allowing me to, uh, to speak on behalf of my country. Uh, just thank you for all the hard work that you have done till today. Uh, I want to speak uh, about the proposal for Germany uh, who add, uh, change the, the article E uh, N and put on the basis of. I think that to me it means a, a, a sense when we, uh, we accept that the international law is, uh, is uh, the standard for the ethical uh, standards that we are going through. So I agree. I just want to say I agree with uh, changing N to on the basis of international law. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Can we please, as a requirement you know, for the UK, is to have paragraph 14? Again, separately, please. No, no I want to see paragraph 14 separately. I want to see it separately. And just strike the part. Can play a key role. If I'm not, if I'm correct with the request. Yeah, okay, until then. So, here we have the, the UK. Okay. I'll continue the list. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Russia, followed by Belgium, then the UK. Russia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Just one moment, please, says the delegate. Mr. Chairman, the text is changing so fast that we do not have time to adjust our intervention. 
as far as we can understand, the legitimate um, proposal was uh, the deletion of the paragraph. We fully endorsed that previous proposal. And if it's acceptable, then uh, if that's agreeable to you, you can consider that's the proposal of Russia. We feel that for some time uh, we uh, have emphasized the fact that this approach to this draft recommendation, uh, this particular aspect was premature and we are in the process of uh, establishing a universally recognized approach in the f sphere of ethics and this paragraph is already referring to harmonization. Unfortunately there's background noise as the interpreter. We feel that this is what we were trying to point out. What we're talking about is uh, this is not a um, a binding document on member states in international legal terms, but we're talking about soft law. We are talking about guidelines which will become the basis for convergence, for harbin, harmonizations on a common approach of, of, of standards. And in this regard, we would like to have our point of view reflected. And just one additional point, during the discussion over the past few days, we have felt we've come across significant complications in terms of drafting of those aspects of the text which are in black on the screen. Um, so we feel that a common approach for all delegations should be adopted here. We, what we should have is a consensus here of uh, for governing our uh, meetings re uh, from the very outset of the, uh, the from the very outset of the drafting of the uh, text in, in black and white. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Russia. And just to clarify the reason why I mean it was upon the request of the UK is not to delete the whole. Para, their concern wasn't only in this part of the paragraph. Saying that, I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Belgium, followed by the UK. Belgium. Thanks, Mr. The President. I will be very short. Uh, I do support a German agree uh, German amendment. Uh, just two remarks. I would like to replace on the basis of, which is uh, quite difficult to interpret by the terms in full respect of international law, in particular human rights law. And my second remark is to, to keep, as a German has proposed, the terms uh, developing and harmonizing AI-related legal norms across the globe. I think that there are two different things, developing and harmonizing, and I think we have to keep both things. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by France. Oh, I think that was uh, perhaps a, um, a legacy hand. Apologies. I'll move. France. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We feel that regarding the German amendment and the request of the UK to uh, delete the paragraph, we feel that this will enable us to come up with a compromise solution, which, um, which these are not new amendments, but I think that this may be proposed again by Germany, so we will give our view at the appropriate time. However, on Iran's amendment, we noted that our Russian colleague emphasized that we were in the process of working on a conventional, uh, 
a, a globally recognized recommendation. Uh, Russia is quite right because we are working in the format of UNESCO with 195 uh, member states so if that's not global then quite frankly what is? We uh, also unfortunately reject um, uh, Iran's proposed amendment which consists in replace uh, with the uh, generally instead of globally we wish to uh, maintain the term uh, globally. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Again. Uh, please, you know, everyone who take the floor, try to elaborate on the three different amendments in front of you, the K UK or the Germany or the Iran. So I can, you know, reflect on the room. I'll give the Brazil followed by the UK. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, uh, regarding the three amendments that are in the scene, we would prefer to keep the original text, but uh, we could go along with the proposal that Germany uh, made through the chat, which is a kind of compromise between the, the British proposal and the German one. Sorry and, uh, to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Brazil. Please do not put amendment on the chat. Do not put amendment in the chat. You know this from day one. To me, it does not exist. Amendment to the chat. The reason of that, people, you know, some people are using uh, the web, the, you know, the webcast. Some people are listening that they cannot follow the chat. So make sure you know what's on the screen so we can follow. Sorry for the interruption, uh, Brazil, Mayra. You can continue, please. So in this case, uh, we would uh, we would prefer to stay with the original, or we could accept the German proposal. Uh, the German that is on the screen, and uh, and just uh, uh, another procedural um, issue that I wanted to to highlight because in the last paragraph, uh, actually when we were about to adopt, uh, uh, the chair actually asked who who supported the, the 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 paragraph as it was. I think it would be more coherent to 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 always uh, to continue with the procedure that we have been adopted adopting before, which was to, to ask if someone had uh, opposition to that, because otherwise it, it, it looks like a kind of uh, voting procedure. And then it poses some questions about how many people voted and how many people supported or not. This is not a point of order, it's just a, an observation. Uh, thank well, thank you. Thank you, Mayra. You know, you're right, but I was so confident that, you know, we have unanimous after that lengthy discussion. It felt good to have okay. everyone's hands up, but you're right. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Namibia. UK, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, it has been pointed out that, of course, by, by retaining the deletion at the end of our amendment, that we um, have an incomplete uh, sentence. Um, and I wonder if, if now is the appropriate time to uh, Absolutely. propose Absolutely. The, the amendment. OK, so it would read, um, can play a key role in developing ethical AI-related norms across the globe. And, and just again, for, for the context, harmonizing has a very specific legal meaning that um, we, we would not be able to go along with here. Um, and and we hope that that this might um, might work for for others. And and to also just to clarify that we are um, also very content to go along with the German edit. Um, so combining the two uh, into one may be the easiest way forward in terms of considering the, the text. But um, we're in your hands on that point. Thank you. I'll give the floor to uh, Namibia, followed by Algeria. Thank you, Chairperson. I think the distinguished delegate of UK just um, proposed what we were also going to go along with, because we also agree that harmonizing has got a specific legal meaning and could uh, not be appropriate in this context. So we we, we uh, agree and support the text, text as it is reflected on the screen now after the UK uh, proposals. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Namibia. I'll give the floor to Algeria. Ahmed, tafaddal. 
شكرا سيدي الرئيس um, I, th I have a little problem with the um, German uh, amendment um, which, which goes a little bit uh, in line with what uh, we discussed in uh, PP13. Uh, I, I'd rather see um, accepted ethical standards for AI technologies and international law, in particular human rights law. We are not talking about on the basis of international law. We are talking about these together can um, shape, can develop or harmonize or whatever. So the, so the, the meaning changes uh, quite substantially um, through this amendment. Uh, with respect to the amendment just uh, phrased by, by the distinguished delegate of UK, uh, I, I think it's fine uh, developing instead of harmonizing ethical AI related legal norms. I, I have a, um, a worry, um, and this is just for the experts to answer, um, would ethical standards come first and then developing um, AI related norms, or would it be ethical norms that help develop uh, ethical AI related standards? Uh, this is just a question I'm putting forward. But I'd go, we'd go for the uh, UK amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Algeria. I'll give the floor to Finland, followed by Poland, then Morocco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a quick round of comments to amendments. Uh, we prefer globally uh, rather than generally. And uh, we think that the, this uh, issue with harmonizing um, replace by replacing that by developing um, is, is a very good uh, move uh, it, it removes a very um, specific term that, that that we wouldn't necessarily want to be doing so so I think the UK UK proposal um, will 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 help towards consensus here uh, we would be uh, supportive of the German proposal to add on the basis of, but we are flexible on, on, on that one and want to kind of can, can accept consensus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Finland. I'll give the floor to Poland, Morocco, Mexico. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for, from Polish side, uh, we prefer also the, uh, to keeping global because uh, it word is related to the can a can is a model verb and now we work how to create the global accepted ethical standards and the, in preamble that kind of expression is uh, very needed and, and useful and, and gives uh, additional value for our uh, our next work uh, to, to the uh, police action and others and uh, from the um, uh, other amendments uh, we would like to thank one one more time uh, to uh, english colleague to um, uh, changing um, uh, its position and we uh, could support that amendment uh, to, to add the um, developing ethical uh, I related norms across the globe um, and 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 uh, delaying the harmonizing, and but uh, from the um, perspective of a German uh, proposal, we would like we could uh, support, but then the, the other amendments uh, um, bring us by colleagues from the Bel Belgium uh, on our opinions better, and that uh, in, not on the basis, but with respect of international now law from our perspective is better uh, of course on the base we prefer the original text but if trying to find the consensus we could support what was expressed now by us and thank you very much thank you thank you poland i'll give the floor to morocco followed by mexico uh, thank you chair in order to achieve consensus, we can endorse the uh, amendments which have been proposed, but I draw your attention to the fact that the uh, suggested amendment by Belgium, uh, by Professor Eric Poulet, who uh, says that uh, respecting international law would be better, well, that certainly goes for us. And I would also draw your attention to one word when we refer 
to human rights, what are we talking about? We have international human rights law, or are we talking about other forms of law? So I would like to clarify this particular point. We have the word international, international law, human rights. Uh, so this is um, missing, missing in actual fact, the reference to international harmonization is something that we take a favourable view of for harmonising uh, national legislation. Uh, well, uh, we think that this is positive, provided this is consistent with international law in terms of the ethics of uh, artificial intelligence. And therefore, from our standpoint, harmonisation is a positive uh, thing and we think we should keep this word and we also uh, are in favour of uh, having international legal norms. We think that would be preferable but we can join the consensus and the paragraph as it appears on the screen, well we, we endorse it. International law thing. Have it in both in the UK and in the... No, sorry, he wasn't talking about the Germany. Sorry. No, no. Only the Germany. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Mexico, followed by Germany. Mexico. It was Belgium, with respect, not Poland. Belgium. Mexico, you have the floor. Javier? Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, Chairperson. Now, with these amendments that have been tabled, I think that we prefer uh, Belgium's version rather than uh, the one presented by Canada. We also believe that it is uh, uh, important to um, go to developing rather than harmonizing. I think that we are... Uh, it's very early days to talk about harmonizing. I think that developing is, uh, is a very good suggestion. Now, uh, Chairperson... On the other hand, uh, I am in some confusion because initially we're talking about ethical standards that will continue to develop, will be key to develop ethical norms. So ethical standards will uh, help to develop ethical norms. Uh, should it perhaps be legal norms? I think that it is a little... Uh, uh, it is a source of confusion to add ethical norms. I think that we should keep legal norms. In my understanding, ethical standards will be guiding us towards generating a um, legal framework, legal norms. So I uh, would replace ethical uh, again by legal at the end of the sentence. Thank you. Thank you, Mexico. I'll give the floor to Germany. Germany, you have the floor. Katrina, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I've very attentively listened. I would like to, to, to clarify a few points. Um, I think um, I agree with, um, to a certain point, that the second ethical is not necessary in the end by developing ethical AI-related norms. However, it cannot be legal because um, this, again, seems to, in the line of, of what our, our Russian colleague said, this seems to be prescribing a process that is in no way mandated, so that's important. Um, as in to further explain our amendment, we are not talking here about the relation between ethics and law. What we're talking about is ethical standards, and ethical standards is the instrument we are talking about. It is a specifically non-binding instrument, and a non-binding instrument in relation to international law is building on international law. It is not so it is something that is not the same level. This is the point I've made, we've, I've made in all our amendments. We need, when we talk about eth eth this, this, when we use this wording, accept, accepted ethical standards, it means this instrument. It means non, a, a non-binding instrument. And this relation between a non-binding instrument and binding, including binding international law, must be quite clear that, that, that there is a difference. This is not about the general relation between ethics and law. However, of course, in the spirit of compromise, we can live with something that goes in the line of the Belgian idea. However, it can't be with respect because with respect does not say what we want to say. It must be 
um, in full respect of, not with respect to. With? In full respect of. Okay. Is it okay to, to work with this change uh, on the UK? Because I see a lot of the room are not happy with the harmonize. So before, no, before you add the addition, uh, now after this uh, round of discussion, everyone heard point of view, the UK. <clears throat> now Germany, you can present any like the compromise between the two amendments. I just well, tried- this compromise no, no, sorry. You know, I just want to, you know, at the beginning you had, a, you know, a compromise text between the two amendments, and I did not allow it just for a, a sing, simple reason. I want to be consistent what we've been doing for the last month and a half. I want to hear from everyone, each amendment, so everyone will be on board. Now, after everyone heard the UK's, I mean, point of view and yours, I think it's now the suitable time to present it. So, with my honor, present your point of view. Um, thank you very much. I would like to. Um, uh, do, I can. I, it can be very brief because our discussion has moved in that regard, in that direction. Um, it would be um, working on the um, on the British Compromise proposal with developing, um, and we won't need ethical. We just need um, AI-related norms. So taking out the legal, indeed, that is correct. Um, and then following up on our discussion, um, we, we would prefer on the basis of, we can, we have heard voices that are opposed to, to this, so it would need to read in full respect of, and not with respect to, because with respect to does not make sense, it is just, it's a different term, the, the word respect has a very different sense otherwise, so um, it would need to be in full respect of. We have a preference for on the basis of, but we understand that that colleagues have reservations. So um, this would be potentially a compromise outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So could you please clean that text in front of me? And delete the top, the upper one and below. Yes, delete the one below also. Okay, make it one color. As my dear colleague from Brazil remind me, does anyone object? Can we have consensus in the paragraph, preamble paragraph 14? Okay, I have the. Dear Representative of Russia, Russia, you have the floor. Russia. The proposal that we would like to uh, make is the removal, the deletion of the whole paragraph as was proposed by the delegation of the United Kingdom. revoke their amendment to only uh, changing part of the paragraph. But now we we're, got all yes. we're prepared to become the authors of that particular amendment uh, to delete the paragraph because we feel it was inappropriate. We, we saw that we had drafted um, uh, the text in black which made things difficult. What we're uh, requesting is that uh, is to look at the, uh, the, the the other paragraphs where there's not where there have not been substantive changes. Thank you chairman. So we still have the Russia when I delete the whole paragraph. Okay. Does anyone would like to take the floor in supporting the deletion of the paragraph? Again, I'm reflecting what's on the floor, and the floor is not with deleting the paragraph, and does anyone object the paragraph in front of us? 
beside Russia, Russia, I can accommodate that in the, in the report that Russia, I mean, Russia's point of view regarding preamble paragraph 30, 14, but I don't see a support on the floor regarding the deletion. I see, cons I mean, I see the major, I mean, I see the room reflecting, the room is more into keeping the text in front of us. You have the floor, dear Mr. Russia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Well, to continue previous practice, we would like to reserve our position on this uh, paragraph uh, for other de delegations, we draw attention to the fact that uh, drawing on international law uh, in full respect or in compliance or in respect of, in this case, in full respect, does this mean that the degree of compliance uh, with international law, is there some kind of hierarchy uh, in the in the meanings in this regard, with, uh, in terms of respect of international law, and let me also remind our colleagues: this is a non-binding instrument. Saying that, I see France. France, you have an objection to the text in front of you. No, Monsieur. Le no, Mr. Chairperson, I do not have an objection, as stated in the chat. Uh, we agree with the compromise suggested by Germany, but we do have two comments, Mr. Chairperson. First, on the notion of synonyms. We have heard, while respecting in full respect of, we believe there are equivalent texts. Uh, they are stylistically different, but at least in French, and uh, I wouldn't vouch for other languages, but in French, they are uh, exact equivalents. Mr. Chairperson, also, as uh, has been wrongly, we believe, uh, uh, mentioned, uh, we were not uh, uh, modifying the text in black. We were following up on amendments uh, that had uh, been put forward during discussions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, France. I give the floor. I see Iran. Iran, could you please? Dear representative of Iran, you have the floor. Okay. So, I see, I see Mexico. Mexico, you have the floor. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. And apologies for taking the floor again, but I do believe it is important to highlight how important it is in our view to keep this paragraph as has been stated many times this is a non-binding instrument but it will become a, a reference that will be very relevant to our countries uh, in the development uh, of artificial intelligence uh, to help establish uh, norms or legal frameworks and this is what the paragraph reflects, that we have ethical standards that will guide us in generating the norms we will need for the proper development of artificial intelligence. And this is why we believe that we really need to keep this paragraph. Thank you. Thank you, Mexico. Iran, your hand's still up. Iran? Okay. I think there might be a mistake. With that, I can say we have approved paragraph preamble paragraph 14 it's approved could we go to the next one so pp15 um there are several amendments that i will read the paragraph as amended bearing in mind the universal declaration of human rights 1948 germany delete including article 27 and emphasizing the right to share in scientific advancement and, and its benefits. The Singapore applicable instruments of relevant international human rights frameworks, including Canada addition, the convention relating to the status of refugees, 1951, Russia, the discrimination, employment and occupation convention, 1958, Singapore, delete the convention against discrimination in education, 
It continues the International Convention on the Elimination for, of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, 1965, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, 1966, the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, it's said twice, so. the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against uh, Women, 1979, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, 1989, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, 2006, Singapore edition, the Convention Against Discrimination in Education, actually the movement, Russia, Singapore, delete the Discrimination, Employment and Occupation Convention, 1958, then it continues, the Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions, 2005. Same paragraph, there is a suggestion by Iran to delete it, to delete PP 15. Sorry, sir, let me just continue the amendment of Iran because it uh, tackles the others. Is to delete PP15, PP16, and PP17 and propose a new paragraph that would read as bearing in mind all relevant declarations, recommendations, and reports. Thank you. So we have several amendments from Canada, Russia, uh, Singapore, but I think Russia, they are just fixing the, uh, the time. You know, they are going with the uh, timeline from the oldest convention to the newer one. Uh, they are not deleting, they're just the, the position. But anyway, I'll give the floor to the member state who are presenting their amendment. First, Germany, followed by Singapore, followed by Canada, Russia, and finally, to our dear representative of Iran. So, Germany, you have the floor, Catherine. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I can be quite brief. Um, member states will recognize that this is a point that we have made repeatedly throughout the, the document. Um, we do not wish to highlight one specific right. We think it is inappropriate because, um, first, we don't do it with regard to all the other conventions. Second, um, this would restrict the content of our, of our ethics recommendation way too much because, for example, freedom of research, um, freedom of opinion, freedom of information, all these aspects play an, an, an equally important role in this context. So we should not highlight one specific right. Um, if member states are concerned that this the, the participation element needs to be highlighted. I would like to remind colleagues that we have found a well-balanced compromise with regard to the right, of the right to development, which is um, covering the same issue. So um, I would urge colleagues to stick to this pattern that we, we are keeping throughout this paragraph and uh, not highlight one specific right over the others. This is a prioritization that we cannot support. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to the dear bliss of Singapore, followed by Canada. Uh, thank you, Chair. So uh, we are going to adjust our amendment a little bit. So we will be dropping applicable. Uh, however, we will keep relevant. Uh, the reason why we've added it is because we prefer to reflect that not all member states are uh, party to the treaties that have been listed in the international human rights framework. Uh, so we prefer to keep it there. Uh, for the movement of the Convention Against Discrimination in Education down the paragraph, that's because we understand that it's traditionally not part of the International Human Rights Framework, and that's why we shifted it down. Uh, and the last one, which deleted uh, the Discrimination, Employment and Occupation Convention, uh, our understanding uh, is that this is an ILO convention and it's not of the same uh, signature level as the rest mentioned here. So we had prefer to keep it uh, deleted if possible. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Canada, followed by uh, Germany. You have your hands up. Oh. I'll give the floor to Canada, followed by Russia. Canada. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Very quickly, um, the rationale is uh, just uh, this addition, given the particularly uh, vulnerable situation of uh, asylum seekers and the potential impact of the use of AI on their rights in particular. Thank you very much. Can we give, can we have the floor to Russia, please? Thank you very much, Chair. You are quite right. We 
simply wanted to set these instruments out in chronological order in terms of their um, adoption. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Rasha. I'll give the floor to Iran, please, to elaborate on the deletion. Iran? Okay. Would like anyone to take the floor? I guess in this case, we should take a break for 20 minutes and we come back. So during this 20 minutes, you can look at the preamble paragraph 15 and decide what to do. I'm going to go have coffee and see you in 20 minutes.
Welcome back. I hope you had a great break. Before we start in the preamble paragraph 15, uh, we have 12 more paragraphs. And we only have half the session today and tomorrow. So please, if we can be more flexible, and also for your interventions, please try to stick with the time, not to exceed two minutes, and to the point. The reason of saying that is, you know, even once we are done, we need, as in the secretary, they need at least an hour to compile all the changes so we can approve the text as whole. Without any further delay, now I'll open the <coughs> discussion for paragraph 15. If we have anyone left or back from the break. Okay, I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Brazil. UK, Lucy, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, as the UK, we, we would actually support Germany's suggestion here that we, we don't think it's helpful to um, specify or sort of draw out any particular article um, of, uh, or, and, and therefore sort of create some kind of hierarchy. Um, otherwise, we, we can be uh, relatively flexible here. We are happy to reference the convention related to the status of refugees. We have no strong feelings about the placement of the Convention Against Discrimination in Education um, or Employment and Occupation. I'm, I don't know if I'm reading that correctly. Um, I think we would have some difficulty with, the, with relevant uh, in front of international human rights framework, um, which doesn't seem to perhaps be in the right place in any case, but also um, I think it's sort of taken for granted that uh, it would be, it, it sort of wouldn't, interact or conflict with uh, whether um, individual countries have, have ratified specific conventions. So we don't feel that that's necessary. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Brazil, followed by Austria. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, actually, Brazil is, is ready to accept all the amendments because I think uh, they, they didn't really change the, the substance of, the, of this paragraph. Uh, there was only one inclusion, I think, uh, that was proposed by Canada, and we do support it. Uh, and actually, I, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Before I give the floor to, to Austria and Poland, does anyone oppose? Does anyone oppose the text in front of us? Does anyone oppose? Okay. I see. I'll give the floor to Austria, followed by Poland, then Iran. Austria, you have the floor. Thank you. Very quick. I, I can totally echo what Brazil said. Um, I don't oppose, but uh, what UK said, the place, the instrument of relevant, I would just um, not go along with the Singaporean uh, amendment concerning the relevant. Everything else is fine with me. Okay. Can we remove? Yes. Strike it, please. Okay, does, uh, I'll give the floor to Poland, followed by Iran, then Singapore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> we uh, don't oppose so much, uh, but we rather um, try to uh, uh, argue to keep the uh, including Article 27 in, in the text. Uh, why? Because it is more proper for our work to, now. We, we rather uh, need some very t uh, specific uh, route to develop artificial intelligence related uh, ethics um, technology uh, for, for recommendation. And uh, especially Article 27 emphasizes the right to share in scientific advancement and, and, and its benefits. Of course, we can live without this because, of course, uh, Universal Declaration covered this. But if we create a very concrete, very original document, uh, on, on our opinion, it's worth to underline that expression. Thank you very much. Thank you, Poland. And I'd like to thank all the previous speakers for sticking with the time. I'll give the floor to Iran, Singapore, and please be consistent, I mean, be specific, so we have uh, enough time. Iran, you have the floor. Dear President of Iran, Yunus. 
Thank you, Excellency. Excellency, and um, then uh, the, 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 we have an amendment, we have a proposal here that goes for PP15 as well, and 16 and 17. Uh, the reason that we propose here, we have a long listing here. The problem of listing here is always there. So the, some so some some of the proposals of the, some of the countries are here, and then there are a large number of the countries that their listing is not reflected here. That's one problem that makes the listing challengeable and difficult. The other one is that the the the, 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 the there are some some of them that, that there are countries that was not in this process. I mean the negotiation process or are not the part of that agreement, and that's another one that makes the such a kind of listing difficult. And then for refraining from such a kind of problem, we propose a short and concise uh, paragraph that by your permission, I read it to the room, bearing in mind all AI relevant declarations, recommendations, and reports, full stop. I, I'm sorry, we missed the AI here, and I appreciate that the secretary also add the, the AI before all here. So, Excellency, this is our proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Iran. Can we add that? Yes, or relevant AI declaration recommendations and report. So <clears throat> we have two options, the text and Iran, the two things, the text in front of you, paragraph 15, and Iran where it says, bear in mind all relevant AI declaration, recommendation and reports. Okay, I'll continue the floor, Singapore followed by the UK. Thank you, Chair. So uh, we're not going to push on relevant. If the room thinks it's self-evident, we are prepared to let it go. But for Russia's movement of the discrimination and convention, uh, because it's an ILO treaty, it should actually be after the semicolon on the rights of persons with disabilities 2006. So we would rather keep the placement there if possible, uh, if the preference is to keep the reference of that convention in the paragraph. Uh, with regards to Iran's proposal, uh, we actually don't think it makes sense because what are AI declarations? <laughs> I don't think that's common terminology that could be easily understood, so we would not support it. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Finland. Thank you, Chair, and apologies for taking the floor again. Um, I just wanted to uh, be clear that the UK could not support um, the level of streamlining that's being proposed by, by the delegation of Iran, um, we find that the, the PPs uh, 15 through 17 are, are very helpful um, and, and we would like to work with them rather than uh, suggesting to delete and, and replace with what I um, also believe is, is not an entirely clear sort of formulation as, as my colleague from Singapore just, just pointed out. So just wanted to, to be clear on that point. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, UK. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Finland, followed by Iran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, very quickly, uh, thanks to our colleagues for the flexibilities. Um, Singapore here in this case, especially, um, we felt that the relevant was was in the wrong place. Now, now it looks looks much better. Uh, we're okay with the text on the screen at the moment. Um, with uh, regards to the. Uh, delegation of Iran's proposal to delete this and, and two other paragraphs, that's, that would be too far. Definitely, at least uh, the 15 or 16, we we will need. This is the, the um, um, we are not a big fan of lists, but uh, listing the, the conventions uh, and, and important, most important instruments that uh, this uh, recommendation is kind of standing on uh, is, is uh, uh, enough or is important. Um, and with regards to the order in which these are mentioned, um, we are relatively flexible. It, it seems to make sense to us that uh, having a chronological ordering, as our uh, colleagues from Russia have proposed, uh, would uh, maybe relieve us from from an ar long, lengthy argument about the kind of rel related in importance of, of these uh, important documents. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Finland. I'll give the floor to Iran, followed by Belgium. Iran. Excellency, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for the floor, but whenever you gave me the floor is that just 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 that I remember that the UK, the colleague 
the, the colleague of UK that now spoke, he supported always the, 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 the deleting the listing, especially in the paragraph that, that, that the, the focusing on the UN system. And then for that reason, we believe that yes, we support also the, the listing um, because the listing, as I mentioned, making the, the, the text complex and then having a short paragraph so a streamlining and then make the to make the text short. So as we had a, a semi agreement that following the, the same proposal that the UK mentioned. So in that line, we propose that we have the same practice here. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Iran. I'll give the floor to Belgium, followed by Germany and Morocco. And I know, please <coughs> remind you again, Try to watch the time. Belgium. Mr. Chair, I will be very short. I cannot agree with the Iranian amendment. Just to say, uh, because, um, as you know, Harvard University uh, AI Lab has listed more than 500 AI declaration, recommendation, and reports. And it is quite clear that to, to make a reference to all this uh, declaration will create confusion. So it is impossible to to add that reference in our in our in our uh, recommendations. Thank you, Belgium. I'll give the floor to Morocco. Tfadali Maghreb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for giving us the floor. I think that the fact that we're drawing up lists is always a difficult task because uh, every time we draw up a list, we have to ask ourselves uh, what is the hierarchy of the instruments, and perhaps we're referring to one without and we're omitting another. So yesterday I consulted the legal advisor of UNESCO. I asked for his opinion and I was told that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is that which supersedes all the other instruments. Therefore this Universal Declaration of Human Rights is at the it's at the top of the list. It prevails over other, all other legal documents. So, referring to the Charter of Human Rights would indeed be useful. And we must not forget that this Charter, this Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which prevails over all other conventions, would be sufficient However, some delegations have said that these instruments are important regarding um, in artificial intelligence in particular. There are other major texts such as the WTO texts on intellectual property. We also have legal instruments regarding uh, online or remote learning based on also based on AI. So there are texts which have a regional scope but which are also imp important in terms of artificial intelligence. So we could draw inspiration from uh, regional texts apart from the European text. There's an agreement, for example, the Budapest Agreement regarding cybercrime and uh, e-crime. So we must not forget that there is a huge lucrative market out there regarding AI and therefore we need rules. But it will of course be impossible to cover all themes, all subjects, all instruments in uh, this area of AI. So what we could add to this paragraph, it, we could make a small, a minor addition saying that there are international legal documents, legal texts, that there are other provisions, not only conventions, but other texts such as recommendations 
legal documents which are governed by international law and which are uh, important regarding AI. So therefore we should leave the door open as it were so that the readers uh, clearly understand that we are referring to all instruments which um, which uh, relate to AI. I'll give the floor to Egypt so everyone can hear your uh, uh, suggestion, followed by Germany. Loud and clear. Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much, Chair. To add at the end of the paragraph, we keep the listing as it is, and we add at the end of the paragraph, as well as any other relevant international and instruments, recommendations and declarations. And that's why I, I wrote it in the chat so the, the Secretariat can take them and, and put them on, on the screen. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Shukran, Amr. I'll give the floor, I'll give the floor to Germany. Katrina. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like our colleagues to thank them for their, their very um, constructive con contributions. Um, I would like to highlight in response to a number of, of um, or specifically with regard to what our Moroccan colleague has outlined, that this is uh, a usual technique to enumerate instruments um, and sp specifically human rights instruments, as this paragraph does. It's, it's, it's specifically this. And otherwise, if we only ever refer to the Universal Declaration in all its importance, it would also mean or could imply that whatever work or, or, or estimated and, and very competent colleagues in, in Geneva have been doing um, on other conventions and specific human rights work uh, was not sufficiently recognized, which is why it is important. Um, I, I also support, I must read it in specific, uh, more, more precisely, um, the, I, I find the idea of the last Egyptian amendment quite useful, um, specifically with regard to our text not wanting to, to look dated at a certain point, because obviously um, any listing as we have established is, is a, is, reflects a moment in time. Um, um, I was a bit concerned to hear um, our colleague uh, referencing to another representative from from the UK. I think the person who takes the floor for the UK and is representing the UK had just expressed her opinion, and um, we should respect that um, the and, and not put into question whether member states or representatives of member states actually reflect um, the position of their member state. It's something that I found. Uh, Exceedingly odd, I must say. So, um, support for this compromise text as it stands now. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Can we? Does anyone object the text in front of you before I? Unless you object, could you please? Does anyone object? Iran, you have the floor. Iran. And then. Excellency, let me let me repeat that I wanted to understand you. You wanted to, uh, if you wanted to go with the listing, so the, we the, we propose that international international covenant on civil and political right ICCPR also should be in the listing, because that's one of the main instrument in this regard. Thank you, Excellency. This one, Iran? Above, above, above it? International Convention of Civil and yeah, Political International Rights. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. It's there. ICCPR, Excellency. Isn't this one? International Convent on Civil and Political Rights. The highlighted on the screen. Yeah, yes, Excellency. Okay. Yes. It's already there. Thank you. Yes, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, can we accept the text in front of me? Okay. Al-Maghrib, uh, Al-Maghrib, but Raja Al-Tizam for the Al-Maghrib. Morocco, please. Mr. Chairman, we have no objection to what we see displayed on the screen, but I would simply ask 
that we uh, indicate that this was a proposal from Morocco initially and then it was endorsed by Egypt. So we would like to see our name appearing as uh, the, the uh, author of the proposed amendment. Of course there are conventions, there are recommendations, instruments, political directives and therefore we should uh, refer to instruments in the more generic sense of the term. Thank you. Thank you, Morocco. Okay, with that, is there any objection of the text in front of you? I see none. Could we please clean the text? And put it in black. Thank you. So I say the preamble paragraph 15 is approved as shown on the screen. Okay, we can move to paragraph 16. So, PP 16 as amended reads as follows. Noting the declaration on the responsibilities of the present generations towards future generations, 1997, the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights, 2005, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, 2007, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution on the Review of the World Summit on the Information Society, Canada, Amendment A slash Res slash 70 slash 125 of 2015, and delete the other reference, Canada, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution on Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, in parentheses A Res 71 of 2015. The Russia delete UNESCO in front of recommendation concerning the preservation of and access to documentary heritage, including in digital form, 2015. The Declaration on Ethical Principles in Relation to Climate Change, 2017. The Russia strike UNESCO in front of, and then continue, recommendation on science and scientific researchers, 2017. Russia amendment strike UNESCO, continue, internet universality indicators, endorsed by UNESCO International Program for the Development of Communication in 2018, including the uh, ROAM principles, Rome principles, endorsed by UNESCO's General Conference in 2015, the Human Rights Council's resolution on the right to privacy in the digital age, parenthesis AHRC uh, slash res slash 42 slash 15, Russia strike adopted on 26 September, and continue of 2019, Canada addition and the Human Rights Council's resolution on new and emerging digital technologies and human rights, uh, in parenthesis A slash HRC slash 41 slash L dot 14, cross parenthesis, adopted on 11 July 2019. Okay, <clears throat> I'll give the floor to Canada followed by Russia. Canada, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, in terms of 2015 versus 2014, it's just uh, the, the, the most recent one. Um, and in terms of um, the uh, SDG reference, uh, the UNGA resolution, uh, obviously we've been talking about the SDGs as, as uh, important in the context of AI. So we just wanted to reflect this in the context of this um, of, of this paragraph. And then uh, same thing at the end, we've been talking about international human rights law throughout the document. And so to reflect some of the most recent uh, uh, conversation at the Human Rights Council on uh, emerging tech and human rights uh, seemed uh, uh, pertinent in the context. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Canada. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Russia. Russia, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The, we, we, this is very much a technical amendment on our part. We are referring in these documents to the, 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 so that there should be consistency with uh, their actual names. We don't want to ensure consistency here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Russia. I'll open the floor for discussion. I'll give the floor first 
to Austria, Brazil, then Iran. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chair. Very quickly, full support for the Canadian proposal uh, in terms of, um, uh, particularly in terms of uh, in, um, including the 2030 agenda. Um, I've explained already how important we feel um, this instrument will contribute to the achievement of the agenda and its sustainable development goals. And <laughs> in order to honor the agreement we've reached, I would suggest um, if that is agreeable with you in the room, that we also add the declaration on the right to develop. And I think that was what uh, was part of the agreement and we certainly want to honor that. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, <clears throat> absolutely. I'll give the floor to Brazil, then to Iran, Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and thank you, Canada, for presenting these amendments, and Russia, too. Uh, we support both of them. Uh, I think it's uh, the Canadian uh, additions are very useful, and also the Russian technical mm -hmm. arrangements to, to organize the tech in a better way is, is also very welcome. And, uh, and yes, we wanted to support what, what Austria just said. And we, 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 we just uh, send in the chat the, the name of the declaration and the, the, the year. So then I think we could include it in the beginning uh, of, the, of the phrase actually, because it's the first, uh, it's the first one, isn't it? We are in, in the chronological order, aren't we? So, in this case, it should be it should be the first one to be mentioned, I believe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayra. Thank you, Brazil. I'll give the floor to the dear distinguished representative of Iran. Yunus, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, giving the floor. Uh, we prefer to add the uh, World Summit and Information Society documents of 2003 in Geneva, 2005 in Tunisia. And uh, the, that is the, we can refer it to Tunis agenda or resist documents. That's all we can, we can refer to. And that is the action line of action line 10, if you want to refer exactly which action line is concerned, that is info, in fact, inform, uh, ethics of the information society or ethical dimensions of information society. And we, at the same time, we prefer to the Human Rights Council's resolutions. Uh, para, we are not aware of that, so we suggest to be deleted, sir. Sorry, Iran, one more time, you want to add which one? Could you please again repeat? The, the document, it has been mentioned, I think, in this recommendation too. Uh, we can refer it to as VESIS documents or action lines of VESIS documents. And that is, as I told you, action line 10. Or we can also mention to Tunis agenda for the information society. Okay, we have. And at the same, yeah. So we have. It is, it is exactly about the ethical dimensions of the information society. We have suggestion from Iran for the addition of the Tunisia agenda. I see Egypt would like to take the floor. Egypt. Very briefly, Mr. President, I would like to thank Austria and Brazil for their, uh, for their comments, and I support them fully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Egypt. I'll give the floor to Brazil, followed by the UK. Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Just to reiterate, I think it should be, be in the first, uh, in the beginning of the phrase, actually, the inclusion of this declaration, because we are following the chronological order, I, I understand. 
So to be coherent with this and the, the previous paragraph, I think we should include in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, start from the beginning for the United Nations Declaration. First of all. And I think there should be a correction of Canada's. HRC 41 slash 41 slash 11. I'll give the floor to the UK. Sorry, UK. Followed UK. Followed by Mexico. Thank you, Chair. No, I was, I was just going to, to flag that. Um, I think we, we caught it and our Canadian colleagues have, have found the right, um, the right uh, amendment. So it should read 41 slash 11. Um, and then just to say, we are, we are very happy to, to go along with all of the amendments. Um, but I don't think that in this paragraph, we have got everything in chronological mm -hmm. order. I just wanted to, to note that, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong on that point. Uh, I think we maybe go a little bit back and forth, but we, we don't mind about the order. So can go along with what, whatever um, the room prefers. I'll give the floor to Mexico, followed by Austria. Muchas gracias, President. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. I'll be brief. I simply wanted to support Austria and Brazil in including this uh, reference uh, right to development. Also, we agree with Brazil for reasons of consistency to put it first in this paragraph. Thank you. Thank you. Again, just a matter of consistency. So we have to, can we take time and to have a chronic, yeah, change the, the order? Yes, please. I'll give the floor to Austria, followed by Poland, then Belgium. Austria. Thank you very much. I have a procedural question. Um, it seems to me uh, the uh, amendment made by the distinguished delegation of Iran is a completely new one. Um, I, I, could you please check and could you please um, respond whether this actually um, uh, wouldn't contravene our established rules that we cannot just um, sort of... Um, come up with new amendments from the floor which have not been introduced within the deadline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me check. Again, as we've been doing for the last month and a half, checking with the secretariat, it's a new amendment and I cannot take it here. So with that, with all the respect to the representative of Iran, I must remove it. And could you please remove the Tunisian agenda, please? Delete it. And the only reason we added the okay, United, it's been deleted, the United Nations Declaration of the Right to Development, keep that, no, that's keep it, because that one was in para, I think, four or five, and we said this is the right place for it. I think para four. Okay, I'll give the floor. Iran, please.
Thank you so much, sir. Just, uh, um, uh, um, I have a question on the reason of deletion of the Tunis commitment. Because it's a new amendment, as we've been sticking from day one, we don't take a new amendment unless something submitted before the deadline. And your amendment regarding the United Nations Declaration of Flight Development was already uh, submitted, but was in para four, and we were discussing para four. We decided it was not the right place, the right place to be added in para 16. Dear Chairman, we, we, we had asked about the deletion of the whole and that, reason, yes, because it's a new amendment. We are participating to help uh, to make the text to be more in line with nothing else. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, with saying that, is everyone, does anyone object to the text in front of you before I approve? So could you please clean the text with all accepted Amendment. I see. No, you need to remove Canada. We don't want to have Canada in the, the name of the countries. You know, this is not UNESCO's job. Okay. Also, I have. You have Russia. Can you please remove also that? No, no. Yes. And there's another one in the middle. Please, Russia, if you want to take the floor, not in the chat, if you want to elaborate on your... Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. We just have a technical modification. We would like to attract the attention of our colleagues uh, to the fact that all of these documents listed in the paragraph uh, are uh, accompanied by a date. And in order to make the text look better, we uh, suggest to keep only the year. So it would that would be only 2015. So we have suggestion just to keep the year from Russia, Iran. Okay. <clears throat> Could we have consensus in the text in front of us? Does anyone object? Iran, I see your hands up. Iran, Yunus. Uh, yes, Excellency. Thank you again for the floor, Excellency. And then, Excellency, as we ask for deletion of this paragraph, and then we will throw our proposal to deletion of the paragraph, but we cannot go with the, uh, the, 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 the two issues that are here. One is the international internet universality indicators as is not a consensus one we would like to ask for deletion of that one and then the last part the resolution and the proposed by a colleague from canada as we are not aware of that one that's not as well as a consensus one thank you we would like to ask for deletion of the two okay and then thank you so is there any support of deleting the internet university indicator would like to take the floor. 
who are in support. I'll give the... F Sorry, wait. We are in paragraph six, 16, but Iran, you asked... You'd, yes, they have an amendment deleting paragraph 16. Uh, I'll give the floor to Russia. Russia. Mr. Chairperson, thank you very much. We support the proposal tabled by Iran to strike out the Internet universality indicators as there is no consensus on this instrument. Thank you. Okay. Is there any objection of deleting the Internet university indicators? Yes, I see. I'll have the floor to the Austria, followed by the UK. Austria. Yes, thank you very much. Um, no, uh, we do object to the deletion. Um, this is, um, and I don't agree that it, there is no consensus. We do refer to, to the to the Internet universality indicators in in, in quite many uh, UNESCO strategic um, documents. Um, so, um, and it's 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 very much uh, correct that it has been it has been endorsed by the IPC um, Intergovernmental Council. So, I'm afraid um, this is very these are quite important. Um, it's quite important document because um, it does add value um, um, because it's a very useful tool for uh, member states to assess. Um, their state of uh, policies and legislation concerning um, the internet in line with uh, the uh, with international law. Um, so um, we would very much favour uh, the retention of this uh, uh, of, of this reference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austria. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be very brief. That uh, we just fully echo um, the comments made by. Um, the distinguished delegate from from Austria, we would not like to see these uh, these elements deleted in the text. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Before I give the floor to uh, Brazil, I see object the deletion of uh, or the amendment of Iran deleting the internet. The, let me read it correctly. The internet university universality indicators by Sweden. Namibia, Finland, Canada. So far, I'll give the floor to Brazil. Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Just very briefly to say that we always also oppose the deletion of this. This is something that was adopted actually in UNESCO by the General Conference too. And uh, so we, we think it's, a, it's an international document that was uh, agreed upon. And uh, well, Yes. Yeah, so, and, and also, just like to remind that this is a paragraph that is very actually very light. The message just says no to this document. So, uh, we don't see any reason to, to oppose so much to, to mentioning one document that was adopted by the General Conference of UNESCO. Thank you. Thank you. I also see the objection of the deletion: Finland, Canada, Germany, Andorra, Slovakia, Singapore. Argentina, Italy, and Spain. So with that, Iceland, Kuwait, Dominican Republic, so I see the room has no appetite of deleting that part. With that, I urge our colleagues from Iran and Russia to come with the consensus and accept the text in front of us. Can you see the text? Can we approve the text, please? Is there any objection on the text? Is there any objection? I see there is an objection by Iran. Iran, could you please elaborate your objection? Thank you, Excellency. Excellency, uh, we are flexible to go with the room, although we raised our concern in this regard. It is not a, 
the, the consensus document that for one reason, Excellency, we propose for deletion of this paragraph. But now we show the flexibilities to withdraw from a proposal. And then based on rules and regulation, we have such a kind of role, the right that whenever we withdraw from our amendment, from our proposal for deletion, so we have such a kind of right right to propose at least for the amendment so we propose the uh, the tunis agenda as a consensus document and it's a, it's a you know that's such a kind of process to sort of develop in the un systems so and then we would like to humbly ask you that excellency we have such a kind of rights to propose at least one amendment to be in the list otherwise so there is a there is a long list that so that i saw many document that are not consensus or my country was not part of that one. So the, the Tunis agenda, it's, an, it's a main document in this regard that focus also on ethical issues. And then we cannot ignore that, I mean, that, 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 that process that focus, that's also a focus on the ethical dimension as well that have a direct added value in this regard. And then Excellency, I humbly leave it to you and then we propose that the, the, this document and the, the be also reflected in the text, as it is the it, it is also focused on the multi-stakeholderism and that document that shows the direct line. And then that's the, the, the first that the first that the main document that focus on the multi-stakeholder and then their, their their activities and then their participation in this process. And then. I leave it to your excellency as we withdraw from our main pro the, the, the initial proposal. So we the, the reserves are right to raise such a kind of proposal here. Thank you, excellency. Thank you, Iran. Uh, again, just matter to, I want to be consistent with every, you know, with since day one, we never accepted any new amendment. Uh, the amendment was deleting. And the same thing as I, I think a couple paragraphs with the UK where they are deleting, we did not allow to add new things, only the part they want to delete. So with that, I regret I cannot add a new amendment, again, to be consistent from the day one, and that's the only reason I think we moved forward. Saying that, I thank everyone for their flexibility, and I will reflect your point of view, Iran, in the report. So please, secretaries, take note of that. With that, I say, PP16 is approved as shown on the screen. With that, I'll give a minute for the observer. Please do not exceed a minute. I have the IAUPL. Please, you have the floor. Mr. President, chers collègues. Mr. Chairperson, uh, dear colleagues and distinguished representatives at the meeting, first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving the floor to a diversity of participants, including observers. Uh, and uh, uh, we are, of course, not here to open up a debate or to add new lists or recommendations. Simply, we had a remark concerning a recommendation that is infrequently mentioned and uh, concerns academics. It's a recommendation on the uh, status and conditions, uh, working conditions of uh, university uh, teachers adopted by the 20th General Conference uh, in 1997 here at UNESCO. So, uh, again, Mr. Chairperson, I simply wanted to mention the, this recommendation, now we are not asking for it to be added to the list, uh, simply uh, we hope that it will be remembered uh, uh, during the promotion of the uh, recommendation being drafted. So uh, thank you again for your attention on behalf of all observers uh, for giving us the floor. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to PP17, please. So PP17, as amended, reads as follows. Noting the report of the Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General on the issue of human rights and transnational corporations and other business enterprises, A, A, A slash HRC slash 17 slash 31 of 2011, outlining the guiding principles on business and human rights, implementing United Nations um, 
Protect, Respect and Remedy Framework, parenthesis UNGP, the report of the Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of the Right to Freedom of Opinion and Expression, in parenthesis A73-348-2018, Germany Amendment, Strike Beijing Consensus on Artificial Intelligence and Education, 2019, then continue the report of the United Nations Secretary General's High-Level Panel on Digital Cooperation on the Age of Digital Interdependence, 2019, and the United Nations Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation 2020, Austria Amendment add the report of the Special Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerance on Racial Discrimination and Emerging te te uh, Digital Technologies, a Human Rights Analysis, in parenthesis A slash HRC slash 44 slash 57 of 2020, Canada Amendment, Add the report of the Special Rapporteur on the Rights to Freedom of Peaceful Assembly and of Association, parenthesis A, slash HRC, slash 41, slash 41 of 2019. The reports of the Special Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of raci Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerance, in parenthesis A, slash HRC, slash 44, slash 57, and A, slash 75, slash 590 of 2020, the United Nations Global Pulse in Initiative, and the outcomes and reports of the ITU's AI for Good Global Summit. There is another amendment by Russia to delete the, the paragraph. Thank you. So I'll give the floor first to Russia for the amendment deleting the whole paragraph, <coughs> then Germany, then Austria, and the final speaker will be Canada. Then I'll open the floor for discussion. Dear President Russia, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, well, the rationale we're putting forward should be taken in conjunction with other paragraphs as well. We're not just uh, suggesting deleting 17, but also para 18 and 21. Why is that? Well, the documents listed are not universal in nature. In fact, what's listed here are reports drafted by international civil servants which have not been adopted at the global level by member states. As a consequence, we suggest having a separate paragraph. Paragraph 20 is what we'd like to, the number we'd like to give it. Uh, could we please have paragraph 20 up on the screen? I think that paragraph, paragraph 20, incorporates all of the various documents which have not been adopted universally. Yes, let's see paragraph 20. No, no, keep paragraph 20 down so they can see the original one also. Go down. Okay. So this is paragraph 20. And the rationale, the Russia to delete 17, where they have an amendment here adding relevant framework developed by intergovernmental organization outside the United Nations system and invites of the private sector, professional organization, and non-governmental organization. That's the rationale of the dear representative of Russia for deleting that para 17. With that, I'll give the floor to the next uh, member state, who are, which is Germany, followed by Austria, then Canada. Germany, you have the floor. Can we go back to paragraph 17, please? Germany. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we would like to have the reference to this um, document uh, deleted because it is in character very different from the others. Um, all the other reports are uh, documents are reports by special representatives or special rapporteurs, notably persons who are specifically um, tasked by the United Nations to work on a specific issue and present reports on them. Um, the document that is referenced here is is just the outcome document of an expert conference. And it is most notably the outcome document of a conference um, that was by no way endorsed by the governing bodies of UNESCO. Um, the UNESCO executive board has in fact refused to endorse it. So um, we are quite insistent on this being uh, taken out. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Austria, followed by Canada. 
Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, let me first explain why we, I think it's in, in a way uh, self-evident. Our document talks so much about um, the need to um, to address uh, all kinds of divides, including digital divides, but also inequalities. And, and, and that uh, report is actually quite a seminal report on the question of how AI contributes to reinforcing um, racism. It's, it's a very interesting report and I can only recommend everybody to read it. But more importantly, if you allow me to say, we, um, Austria would actually um, have no uh, uh, bad feelings towards the Russian proposal. Um, we have no strong feelings keeping para uh, um, preamble of paragraph 17, but there is some value in deleting 17, 18, but would then also uh, suggest to delete 20 and 21. Um, because all these um, lists do not add up anything. Um, but I think if we delete 17 and 18, we shouldn't keep 20. Um, and I think uh, there's a Russian proposal for deleting 21. But again, I'm, I'm very much open, um, uh, whatever the, 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 the feeling in the room is. But it would certainly help streamlining the document. Thank you very much. So just to uh, 17, Claudia said 17, 18, 18 20, 20 and 21 and the russia says it's 20 it should take care of all these what it says many existing national policies so that's also we want to delete it okay so here it, it makes sense if yes. we delete uh, 17 18 then we have to delete everything uh, to me i i think that's a great uh, proposal uh why don't you ask her if there's any opposition? <laughs> I know, I will, I will, I will. I'll give the floor. 19 is important. Yes. 19 is important because it talks about um, LDCs and we want to keep that. Yes, I'll, I'll, I will, but I'll continue with the final member say to submit an amendment, then I'll open the floor to the discussion. Uh, dear President of Canada, please. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, we uh, strongly support Germany's uh, proposed edit, um, and uh, we can discuss uh, Austria and Russia's uh, edits uh, uh, further after this. Um, I recognize that basically we are one of the reports we are suggesting to add is the same as Austria um, on uh, the special rapporteurs uh, on contemporary forms of racism, racial discrimination. So uh, I won't go into uh, any more details there. It's basically the same. We added one because it was a series of two reports, but we'd be comfortable just keeping uh, Austria's report, which was the most substantive one. Um, and uh, if uh, we want to uh, also, uh, f we wanted to also flag uh, the report on uh, the rights to freedom of peaceful, peaceful assembly and association, which deals with the question of um, uh, AI in the context of uh, assembly and association, in particular, uh, mass surveillance, unlawful ma mass surveillance. So um, we, we would have liked to also include that one. Um, but again, we are actually uh, flexible thinking about uh, deleting those those lists as well. But uh, in this context, if we are to go with uh, a list, we would we would uh, very much like to see um, those reports reflected. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Canada. Okay, we have a proposal before you take the floor. Is we are delete 17, 18, 20, 21. Before I give the floor, let's see, let's. Put those on the screen. This is 17. Could you please reflect on 18? Just hold on for a minute or two. And go to 20. And 21, which is also, uh, we have an amendment by Russia to delete that too. So Russia have an amendment to delete 17, 18, and 21. With that, I'll open the floor for first Egypt, Cuba, Hungary. Thank you, Mr. President. Actually, um, we are not talking here about the content or the quality of the documents presented in paragraph 17. We are talking about the, the nature of these documents. And I fully support the uh, proposal of Russia to delete this paragraph because the, the, these documents are not 
universally recognized. For the time being, I will stick to the deletion of 17 and 18, and after that, we can talk about the other items, about the other points like uh, 20 and 21, but we are very flexible in this regard. Thank you so much. Shukran, Masur. I'll give the floor to Cuba, followed by Hungary. Thank you, Chair. We have the same position as Egypt and Russia. We are not questioning the quality of the reports, but for the same reason. These are not documents that have been approved by member states, and therefore we prefer not to refer to them. So we would be in favor of eliminating paragraphs 16 and, uh, 17 and 18. And we appreciate the flexibility of our colleagues who have put forward amendments. And we could also be flexible as regards 20 and 21, as regards the proposal put forward by the delegate from Austria. But we would prefer to delete 17 and 18. Thank you. Thank you, Kuba. I'll give the floor to Hungary, followed by Iran. Hungary. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, colleagues. Um, uh, okay, my my comments. Um, although I know I I recognize that deleting these uh, paragraphs would be an easy way out. On the other hand, I feel that it's it's perhaps it's, uh, it's uh, we would miss. Uh, recognizing very important processes which are ongoing at the moment. And as you all perfectly know, most likely, you know, uh, uh, there are initiatives mentioned in these paragraphs, uh, which are very important and relevant uh, in this specific field. And uh, there is also ongoing co uh, cooperation and coordination uh, between the relevant international institutions, so such as you know, UNESCO and, and, and other organizations. I feel that, that by keeping uh, uh, these paragraphs, we would recognize uh, this ongoing work. Uh, and we would also recognize that what we are doing here is not an isolated process. But it's part of uh, you know the global trend uh, 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 where uh, many international organizations and many <coughs> relevant you know international mechanisms uh, are active, uh, and and uh, UNESCO is also working as part of that process uh, as one of the actors. Uh, perhaps you could ask the secretariat for for some additional explanation behind uh, 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 these paragraphs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Hungary. I see uh, Russia supporting the deletion of the paragraph 17, 18, 20, 21. Same thing in Finland. And Brazil also supporting the Austrian proposal. Switzerland also supporting the Austrian proposal. And Australia tried to want to keep paragraph 18 and 20. With that, I'll continue the list. I'll give the floor to Iran, followed by Belgium. And please try to stick with the time. Iran, followed by Belgium. We can go with the proposal of the uh, Russia and we support that proposal. We can also go with the proposal of the uh, Austria to delete paragraph 17, 18, and 19, but and 21. But we cannot go for the deletion of 20. That's really essential for developing countries. Thank you. Uh, so Austria support, I mean, suggested to delete 17, 18, 20, 21. Just to clarify that. Okay, I'll continue. Excellency, my... for clarification, sorry, just for clarification, 
we cannot accept that the paragraph 20 be deleted. Well but noted. We can, we can well go noted. with the rest. Thank well you. noted. I'll give the floor to Belgium, followed by the UK. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have no objection at all against the deletion of all this paragraph, and it's a very long list, and I do not see a priori the, the interest of this long list. But I would like to, to, to know why the experts have introduced this long list. Uh, perhaps they had, they had a reason, and I, I would like to know that. Absolutely. Before I continue the list, one of the experts with us is Emma with us. Please pr briefly. And I heard also <laughs> the addition, before I give her the floor, the addition of para 15, where Egypt added all, I may see. Could you please put the para 15, the approved one? At the end, where they had. Sorry, it was Morocco, as well any other relevant international instrument recommendation. recommendation and declaration that, you know, it might help. No, 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 it's Morocco. It's rock, right, Morocco. But you need to... Okay, can we go down? And is Emma with us, the expert? Please. I, I am. Yes. Can you give us the Thank rationale for adding all this list in Para 17, 18, 20? Yes. Yes, thank you very much for giving me the floor, Chair. Um, the, the main reason was to um, acknowledge work that has been done um, on issues relating to um, the domain of the ethics of AI. And also to note in this specific domain, um, to, for various reasons, maybe um, more than, than in, in other um, academic disciplines, there has been a, a, an interesting role um, also from the side of the private sector, for instance, if we look at, I think it's paragraph 21. Um, but if I look at, I'm very careful as, <laughs> on what I'm saying, but if I, if I look at the addition from Morocco to paragraph 15, I would think that all of this would have been covered. So it was more an intention to be um, inclusive um, and to acknowledge what has been done in a very, very fast growing field. Um, and, and, you know, that's all that I can say. So I, from my point of view, although I'm not allowed to have a point of view, but paragraph 15 would, um, the addition to paragraph 15 would, would cover most of what we intended here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I hope that clarified uh, the request from Belgium. With that, I'll continue my list. Uh, I have the UK followed by Mexico, then Kuwait. UK. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, from the UK's perspective, we, we can be flexible and, and go with the sort of mood of the room, but we do feel that the, the paragraphs only begin with, with the term noting. Uh, that's quite a, a typical formulation um, for a list which, which may include either documents or sort of reports or initiatives that aren't necessarily um, sort of endorsed by all. Um, so we would be we would be happy to work with with the text that's on the table um, in the original form, uh, or or if if sort of absolutely necessary, we could go along with with some radical streamlining. Um, I would say that I'm not sure if I, I'm correct in this, but I'm trying to do a, a search in the document. I think this is the only reference to the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. Um, is that right? Uh, possibly. Um, so that's maybe one that we would be a little bit disappointed to lose in the document as a whole, um, among others. But we can we can kind of go along with the room. But yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Again, after we heard that the, the chair of the expert is was to recognize the work of those listing, but I think with the addition of para 15, that can uh, take care of control that uh, take care 
of that list. So I have, please, if you can be just very precise, is deletion or not? I'll say that. Mexico, Kuwait, followed by Germany. Gracias, President. Thank you, Chair. Now, to be very specific, we believe it's important to retain these paragraphs and to. Here I have point of order of Algeria. Mm -hmm. Algeria, was, you have a point of order? Sorry, Mexico. Algeria? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I would just like to know whether uh, what the um, distinguished representative uh, from Austria has suggested as deleting 17, 18, 20, and 21, is this a new amendment or is it already, has it already been suggested before? Thank you. Uh, we have amendment by Russia, deleting 17, 18, and 21. Yes, I do understand that. I'm asking about the suggestion to delete 17, 18, 20, and 21, which there, is now on the table. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is, again, it's a, already an amendment to deleting this paragraph. So the question was, is to do them all once? Um, the question is whether the four of them are, have been suggested as uh, to be deleted by various member states or not. This is my question. Thank you. I'll give the floor again. We have Austria. Thank you very much. I'd like to explain. Um, we uh, don't see it as a new amendment. It's, it's very much a reaction to a Russian amendment. And I may want to make that very clear, put it in the chat. If we delete 17 and 18, for us, it's, it's, it then follows that we also delete 20 and 21. If we keep 17 and 18, uh, I think we should also keep 20 and 21. Uh, but no cherry picking, uh, because I heard already some being in agreement with deleting 17 and 18, but not maybe deleting 21, but not 20. For me, it's a package, uh, which is a reaction to uh, existing Russian uh, amendments. So in that sense, I think um, uh, it has to be understood in that sense. It's not a new one. It's a reaction uh, to, 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 to the Russian proposals. We would see it as a package. Thank you, Austria. I'll continue the list. Uh, Kuwait followed by Germany. Yeah, thank you for uh, giving the floor. Uh, actually, Kuwait uh, um, does not support deleting any of these as as the UK just mentioned, it's, it's noting at the, at the beginning of the paragraph. And uh, many of, of these are, are uh, uh, very useful reports and are, are being uh, uh, organized by UNESCO themselves. For example, one, one such uh, is written in, in, uh, that has been proposed to be deleted by Germany, for example, uh, the, uh, for the artificial intelligence. It's actually um, a very great document that we, as, as a secretariat for GCC, has implemented it and recognized it. It's, it's used uh, recommendation on uh, having the, bringing AI for accelerating in the uh, progress towards the SDG4, which is in the education era. Uh, it is it is very very uh, concise with with uh, the whole ethics document. It, it's worked with AI in education, uh, AI empowering teaching, AI in the learning uh, and assessment, and many many uh, many aspects that we 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 might not uh, maybe uh, took uh, the time to to go deeper into it, but it it. Um, uh, it's considering AI. Hence, uh, we if, if we if we uh, in, um, uh, mention this in our documents, then we are endorsing this this uh, huge work effort by uh, by many many of these organizations that already been supervised and organized by UNESCO. Uh, I don't see any any harm of keeping it here. Uh, we are introducing an ethical uh, guidelines for all AI. Uh, and uh, so uh, Kuwait really strongly feels that we can keep them here. 
there is no harm in having them in our document, uh, at least to to recognize uh, the 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 efforts that have been done by by such uh, committees. Thank you. Thank you, and my sincere uh, apology to my dear representative of Mexico. He was at the middle of an intervention where we have point of order for Algeria again. My apology, Javier, for uh, not giving you the floor after the point of order. Again, you have no, the floor. No, President. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Chair. Don't worry. We will always be very flexible and will always work towards consensus. For these paragraphs specifically, we believe it's important to retain them and not uh, withdraw any of the references to these documents. And I'll explain why. First of all, these documents exist. They're out there. And we believe that referring to them in the preamble of this recommendation shows that we have actually been able to benefit from these documents and it would mean that we could continue to take into account these documents. We believe that it's useful to have them here and we would prefer to leave them here without uh, deleting any references. That's our perspective. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Before I continue, I see there is no consensus of the deletion. So what I'm going to do is go paragraph by paragraph. So we are in 17, and we have one amendment from Russia to delete that paragraph, and we have an amendment from uh, Germany and Austria, then Canada. I'll continue the list of speakers to elaborate in paragraph 17. Paragraph 17, I have in the list Germany, followed by Australia, then Canada. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Germany will not oppose a consensus on this, saying this at first. Um, we see the merit in outlining what is our context and also in acknowledging the work that has been done um, by, by, uh, to prepare the state of, of play that we are now at. That is one point. Um, the other point uh, with regard to the remarks of the, of the distinguished colleague from Kuwait, um, independent from their perspective on the substance, this is a document that the executive board has refused to endorse. And we cannot, very certainly not, pretend that this decision has not taken place. It might be a conference, it might be applied, but UNESCO governing bodies have decided not to endorse it. And this is an important message that we cannot pretend has not happened. Um, many interesting conferences take place in many contexts and notably on AI. However, we are not including all interesting conferences in this context. And we, just because it has a fancy title does not make it any more fitting in this context. All the other reports referenced here are reports of special rapporteurs of individuals who are firmly endorsed, officially endorsed to work on these subjects and who have in their mandate delivered a report to a United Nations agency or institution. Quite differently from a report that has been actively refused to be adopted by an executive, by a governing body. So this is why it is absolutely unacceptable for us um, to uh, have a reference to this document in here. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to Australia, followed by Canada. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to note that uh, our strong preference um, would be uh, to retain uh, PP 18 and 20. Uh, and uh, as mentioned by my uh, UK colleague, uh, these begin with noting conscious uh, and therefore we think it's, uh, it, it shouldn't be too controversial. Uh, to, to include them. Uh, I also agree with my Mexican colleague uh, that uh, these documents are out there and simply acknowledging that they're out there, again, it shouldn't be very controversial. Um, I just wanted to ask you um, in response to the comment by the ad hoc expert group, if you could please show the reference in PP15. Um, I just was wanted to know how that reference covers off on what was intended. Um, I was unable to note that reference earlier 
And I also agree with uh, with Austria that we really can't cherry pick and remove some uh, references and not others. So I would be also very hesitant in making radical uh, changes in some areas, but they're not in others. So uh, happy to, to, to continue to see where this leads and to focus on uh, PP17, as you suggested. But uh, I'd just like to note for the record that we're hesitant to remove PP18 and PP20. Thank you. And thank you for showing Morocco's edit. I'll just take a photo of that. Thank you. Hold on. Yeah. Are you you're done? Yes, Chair. Thank <laughs> you very much. Okay. Let's go back. I have a point of order for Iran. Thank you, Excellency, for the floor. Excellency, and we consider the one of the distinguished representatives of the one of the countries proposed a package as it is not uh, the, the, the amendment the, 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 that colleague. So we would like to propose that we do not consider that proposal. And then uh, and the, the, the second order is that I, my delegation saw that it's, it's, uh, we saw some new amendment by some other colleagues, and then we would like to to propose to suggest that we have the same practice as we had and then my last point is that we supported that going paragraph by paragraph as we practiced by your leadership thank you excellency thank you and that's what i'm doing is again iran since you took the floor please you know what we're discussing in para 17 that's what we that's what i decided to go para by para and i'm going to para 17 and please since you took the floor can you have your input or point of view on para 17, so I can continue the list. You are with or against or keeping it or deleting it? So Iran, it's okay. I'll give the floor to the next speaker. Canada followed by Finland. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for focusing on paragraph uh, 17 first. I think that's that's a, a good approach. Uh, our preference would be um, to uh, to actually uh, remove paragraph 17 altogether. We feel that, uh, as as you pointed out, uh, the reference in paragraph uh, 15 covers what uh, we are referring here uh, within paragraph 17. So we'd be comfortable with removing it altogether. Um, if we keep it, obviously, as, as we said earlier, we would want to retain uh, our proposed uh, amendments. Um, however, when we get to other paragraphs, we want to retain the, the other paragraphs, which really focus on the multi-stakeholder and inclusive way in which we want to govern AI uh, in an ethical manner. And so we would move to keep it, but keeping it to 17 for now, uh, our preference would be to, to remove it uh, altogether. Thank you very much. Thank you, Canada. I'll give the floor to Finland, followed by Egypt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, just a general clarification that was uh, a worry uh, that was uh, voiced by uh, the distinguished delegate of Iran. Um, the, the paragraph in this set of paragraphs that deals with uh, countries of low, lower and middle income um, is number 19 and no one at any point has proposed to remove that. That is a very an extremely important paragraph, uh, I think, to all of us. So, so that, that that is definitely kind of outside any outside of this question uh, and this discussion. We'll we'll come to that when when we come to that, and, and I'm sure everyone will want to have a have a best version of that paragraph there. Uh, the, this was just this has been a question of of these lists, and and from the Finnish perspective. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the paragraph 15 and 16 uh, listing of the conventions and then the declarations, that is, the, that is an important list. I think that there it's important to enumerate um, and, and list all these different uh, instruments that uh, the recommendation is kind of uh, based on and, and the kind of family of uh, documents where it, where it slots in. Um, the rest of it, and, and again, my apologies. It, it, my apologies. It was the, the distinguished delegate of Morocco, and then uh, kind of supported by by Egypt. Uh, the the addition to 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 PP fifteen that, uh, in our opinion, covers covers these rest of these documents. The reason why our preference would be to delete these listings um, would be that that um, if we think in five years' time. Even in three years' time, I think the list of uh, pertinent reports, uh, important frameworks, um, 
etc., are going to be very different than than what they are now. Uh, this field is moving so quickly that new reports are published every week. Um, new frameworks come up, uh, new actors come to the stage. Uh, their relevance is changing on a yearly basis. So, so this this would, uh, in our opinion, it would kind of streamline this. I do understand the, the points of view of, of those colleagues who have pointed out that it's important to make a note, make a reference to, to all the other work that is being done uh, around us. Um, we feel that maybe there's another place for this. This can be in the report, it can be in the in the other documents, it can be in the in the introduction um, or in the documents that we have for the general conference when we are adopting the the the, the recommendation. It doesn't need to be in the body uh, of the text of the recommendation. Uh, so our our first uh, preference would be to delete these uh, listings from paragraph seventeen onwards. Um, Second, uh, if if we uh, then decide to keep them, we would want to support uh, the amendments by Germany and uh, and then Austria and Canada uh, in in this listing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Finland. I'll give the floor to Egypt, followed by Saint Vincent. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I don't want to repeat what I have already said. It's not about the quality. We are not contesting the quality and the content of these documents. We are contesting the nature. This is These documents are not universally recognized. And, and that's why we are in favor of deleting this. So I join, I echo the voices uh, Canada and Finland and others in this direction. One other uh, comment, if you allow me, Mr. President, about the way forward proposed by Austria. I felt in the beginning of our discussion that there is a good, the temperature of the room can accept the deletion of 17, 18, 20, and 21. Why don't we go in this direction? Because otherwise we'll be in a vicious circle. And as a response to the point of order of His Excellency, the representative of Iran, I see that Austria is just like a reaction. Everybody has to react to the proposal in order to reach consensus, to strike the, the, the delicate balances that we are searching. So the, the, it's, it's not something new. Austria tried to help by saying that, OK, I, I would accept 17 and 18 proposed by Russia if you accept 20 and 21. And I, I think this is a very good way forward, taking them and uh, taking them as a package, I mean. And we, we see the other paragraphs. Otherwise, we will spend so much time in discussing this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Egypt, and I'll have all the time for all of you. And the reason we went para by para, because we see some member states, they don't want the deletion. Uh, continue the list, San Vincent, followed by Morocco, then Iran. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I agree uh, on the comment made by my colleague from Egypt, because uh, I think we can accept uh, Austria proposal, but in a compromise manner. Uh, I would suggest if we remove these paragraphs to put this reference in an annex to the recommendation. As uh, we can put at the end of the recommendation a list of documents which inspire and help the experts to uh, draft this recommendation. So uh, uh, we see that some uh, member states are uh, want, to, want to keep this reference, these reports, uh, these recommendations. But if we delete them, maybe we can make reference in a list of annex at the end of the recommendation as a bibliography, as a reference of documents, uh, which uh, the experts use and read and uh, uh, benefit from these reports to draft. This is my proposal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, St. Vincent. So, but in mind, we have our suggestion is deleting it, but yet to have it in an annex. This way, we can recognize the work has been done, but like what's my dear colleagues from Finland saying, you know, this list it's rapidly fast, will be changed, and we want something practical. So, is that okay with, does, does anyone object that? I see a lot of objection to have them on the annex and deleting them. I'll continue my list. Iran, 
followed by Morocco. Iran, please. And try to stick with the time. Iran? Iran, followed by Morocco. Iran? Excellency, may I, may I ask to raise the, the, your proposal again, and then I'll come back to you if you give me any chance. Thank you. My proposal is deleting 17, 18, 20, 21, but mentioning them in the annex, as was suggested by uh, our dear colleague, Sam, Sam Vincent. So this way, the work is recognized, but it's not in the main text, and that's also to support the point of view of our dear colleagues from Finland, is this list, these reports are rapidly changing, and in a few months, we might have different report, but at the same time, we recognize them in the annex. Saying that, I'll continue my list. Al Maghrib, Fadal, Morocco, Fatma. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, in turn, we support the deletion of this list. Why? First of all, this list, when we have made an addition to the previous paragraph, this amendment did not include this list because the mechanisms uh, referred to in the previous paragraphs is not relevant to this. Laws are the source of this international culture. These reports are studied by experts, but the role of these documents do not go beyond the researchers. So these documents are not significant and they do not have any legal impact and that is why we consider that they should be deleted. I see that some of our colleagues have misinterpreted maybe our addition or they have not understood our addition in the way we uh, proposed it. We wanted actually to leave the door open to uh, think about all other international treaties and conventions. So our um, main focus is not uh, only to put this recommendation, but the implementation. And uh, uh, here I quote uh, uh, a French saying which goes uh, along the following. It is not enough for the uh, author to write, but uh, he should uh, um, look into the uh, reader. Hungary? Again, I'm, the question again, is it okay to delete these four uh, paragraphs but mention them in the annex? If it's yes or no, Hungary followed by Kuwait. Hungary? Thank you, Chair. Sorry, sometimes it's, it's hard to hear you and, and uh, sorry if I didn't react uh, immediately. Um, <sighs> <laughs> I <still> feel, <laughs> you know, in my room, it's already over 30 Celsius, and, and this process is, <laughs> is also making my life difficult. But then anyway, uh, I know I knew you are also suffering from that, so <laughs> lucky to share that. But uh, so I still feel that there are elements in these paragraphs which are extremely important. Um, and perhaps moving them to the to an annex wouldn't solve the situation because we would also need to go through the annex, right? So I feel that we are close to finding a, a solution. Um, uh, so so please don't give it up. Uh, I just want to mention, for example, regarding the reports of the UN Secretary General that you know, he considers uh, digitalization and AI uh, as a priority. Uh, he did that last year also. I think he, he also mentioned in his uh, uh, statement vision for the for his second term. Uh, and I think you know when you have a UN family and you have a secretary general who considers this issue, 
as uh, very important, it should be recognized. And UNESCO is part of that process. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not an isolated exercise, as I mentioned. Uh, of course, there are elements that I would be you know, happier to delete, uh, but um, there are so many important initiatives in these paragraphs. I think it would be a mistake to delete them. And sorry for making your life difficult. Yeah, thank you. I hope your temperature goes down. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. There is no air conditioning. Now. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll give the floor to the dear president of Kuwait, followed by Russia. Kuwait, you have the floor. Thank you for giving the floor uh, again, uh, uh, President. Um, I, uh, regarding the list uh, of having having it been updated, uh, actually we understand that uh, maybe in, in, in a few few months or maybe next year it will be uh, another list. Uh, but uh, we uh, we really respect the, the the long effort that has been done by the group of expertise. Uh, uh, reading, reading these references, reading the state of art at that time, at this um, while creating the this uh, document, and uh, removing it is as uh, if uh, similarly uh, just stripping out the uh, list of references uh, on on a research paper. If if um, actually endorsing it would would say that at the time of of uh, of implementing or writing up these uh, ethical uh, uh, paragraphs yes we we were aware of these these uh, published uh, documents that many of them are are act, actually speaking of state of art and ai and in many many of the um, uh, concerns so we we feel that um, uh, leaving it there or as you as you have just um, uh, proposed putting it in the index it, it will work fine but removing it totally i think it will uh, it will give a bad impression that okay whoever reads maybe 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 uh, we we weren't aware of these at the time of but it, i think having it endorsing it will will give strengthening to our our uh, documents and uh, thank you Thank you, Kuwait. Again, let me emphasize, it will not be deleted totally. It will be mentioned in the annex. So again, let me rephrase my proposal, as St. Vincent you know, proposed, to be deleted from the text, but maintained in the annex for the records. With that, I'll continue with the list. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Russia, followed by Germany, then Brazil. Uh, Thank you, Your Excellency. You know, we were quite impressed by the rationale put forward by both Germany and Austria, although they're sort of mutually exclusive. The distinguished representative of Germany proposed taking a selective approach to the documents. Well, we welcome such an approach. We're prepared to welcome it in the spirit of consensus. If we delete one document, well, that would imply that we're prepared to delete to mentions of other documents. Now, I must say that uh, this is a vast list. In fact, it's much like a bibliography. And there are organizations and documents which are not universal listed in there. They're more like clubs or associations which we're not pre prepared to get behind. As a result, we like Austria's rationale a great deal. Austria said that we don't do, we shouldn't take a selective approach to the document and therefore we should consider deleting all four paragraphs. I call on my distinguished colleagues from the various other delegations to once again consider this possibility. Thank you. Thank you, dear representative of Russia. I'll give the floor to Germany, followed by Brazil, then Algeria. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would like to thank colleagues for their um, very convincing argumentation. Um, I have checked with, with, with Berlin and I have um, a green light to support the deletion of this paragraph. Um, 
I would notably like to support the deletion and not the creation of an annex, because that would only postpone the problem, and most notably would make it, it does not solve the problem of of a list being a moment in time, because we will not go back and negotiate a new annex in two years' time. It would just be a list that has no function at all. So. Um, in that context, in the spirit of compromise, and given that we can indeed only reflect a moment in time in a very incomplete and imperfect way, um, Germany supports the deletion of this paragraph. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. It just, I think, you know, the point was made, you know, to have it in the annex. It's just by the time it was this report done, this document was existed. Uh, this is what's, you know, the point usually of have in the annex. It's the time when this report is done. This is what's... Uh, the document available with the change of this reports and you know again that's what I think this would solve the problem of you know we have the dynamic of the changing of this report but yet again at the end I'll keep it to the uh, to the member states I'll continue my list Brazil and uh, Algeria followed by Venezuela <coughs> Brazil thank you chair uh... We, we also consider that there are many relevant documents listed in these paragraphs. Uh, for example, the guiding principles on bu business and human rights is something that was mentioned by the UK and that we, we think it's very important. Uh, the age of digital interdependence too. But uh, nevertheless, we do agree with the principle of, uh, of deleting the, the whole paragraphs uh, 17, 18, 20 and 21. Because, uh, first of all, because I think it's a very exhaustive list of, of, uh, of documents that, uh, as my colleague from Finland just pointed out, is going to be old very soon because these are just reports, uh, rec uh, recommendations issued by many institutions and in different levels. So it's the kind of documents that gets old very quickly. Um, and on the other hand, I think uh, if you see all, most of the recommendations of UNESCO, they don't have this very exhaustive list of, list of documents that they refer to. Of course, many of them are, are, are pertinent and are important and are relevant, but uh, I don't see I don't see how we should uh, I don't don't think we should lose a lot of time discussing these issues here. You know, and then if we start like discussing each paragraph, which document we are going to to keep or to remove, it's going to be a very long discussion. So I think even to, to facilitate our work, I would propose that, yes, we delete the four of them. And uh, I, I, I really uh, appreciate the proposal made by, by, by St. Vincent and the Grenadines to keep it as, a, as, a, as an annex, because then it would be just a reference just to see like the state of the art in the moment when, when this recommendation was, was written was this one. These were the documents of reference. And it's not something that we are referring to as a base for this. It's just like reference document. So we would support this, this approach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Before I give the floor to the next speaker, please, uh, dear member state, uh, put that in mind. Uh, when we heard about the chair, you know, chairwoman of the expert group, again, they also are the expert. They are the one who utilize this document. And, you know, her point of view is, uh, what with the addition of paragraph 15, you know, it covers their concern. And I think, you know, uh, those experts are really, you know, they are, they are appreciated the list more than a lot of, sometimes than us as a, as, as a diplomat. And they saw, you know, you know deleting it from here uh, will be covered by paragraph 15, and we went extra further having it in the annex. So I would, I would urge everyone to show some flexibility in this, uh, and that we spent, you know, more time in a listing of some reports. Again, I'm saying, you know, this is a reports and outcome studies. We are not deleting the law; we keep them in the annex. So, can I have consensus of that, or I should continue the the list? So, raise your hand unless you are insisting to have it, you know, in the list. Okay, I'll continue my Algeria, please, and try to stick with the time, please, and not to repeat your, your intervention before, please. Algeria, followed by Venezuela. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> there is, uh, first, I'd like to commend the work that has been done by the group of experts 
And uh, I share their understanding that if they mentioned these different paragraphs, it is for purpose. If we take uh, 17, it talks about the issue of human rights, transnational corporations and other business enterprises. This is one dimension. The other one is uh, for uh, 18 uh, intergovernmental organizations, and then 20, it gets into existing national policies and other frameworks. And 21, it talks about uh, the frameworks um, uh, that are from the private sector and so on, and professional organizations. Uh, there is a big difference between putting things as an annex, as references that exist out there, and between having them in the preamble, pointing out the importance of these, of these dimensions and the, the existing uh, literature and, and references. So uh, we would favor keeping uh, these uh, paragraphs in the text. Thank you. Okay, again. So... As I said, you know, we can't, might keep them the annex and the report, but people still want to have them. So again, if I want to keep them, I'm going to open the discussion for the listing and the addition and removing. Uh, again, I want to hear the f more of the floor. Venezuela, followed by Mexico, then France. Thank you, Chair. We support the efforts that have been made to insert this list in the preamble, particularly as regards paragraph 20, we have some concerns. We do not want to see it removed from the preamble because it puts emphasis on the international impact of this recommendation. So we would not be able to support inserting this simply in the annex. Thank you. Thank you, Venezuela. I'll give the floor to Mexico, followed by France, then Latvia. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, as St. Vincent from, and the Grenadines and yourself have already mentioned, we could accept striking these references and inserting them in an annex as bibliographical references something that the expert groups used in order to draft the document. However, we would prefer to proceed step by step in the deletion. We believe that this approach could be used for paragraphs 17, 18 and 21. But as was mentioned by a colleague from Venezuela, we don't see the paragraph 20 as a reference paragraph, but rather one that should be included in the preamble. Thank you. Thank you, Mexico. I'll give the floor to France, followed by Latvia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Now, we've kept quiet throughout this debate, but we have been listening very carefully. We didn't have a clear-cut position. We have acknowledged the fact that the consensus, which we're all searching for, might be reachable if we just delete these paragraphs. We're not in favor of uh, drafting an annex. There are certainly lawyers who are more well versed in all of these affairs. Documents uh, that are going to be, could be referenced in the annex. Yes, well, that's possible, but uh, we're, we're not in favor of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So when I say you know, the, rep the annex, it's the annex of the report. I'll continue my list. Latvia, followed by Morocco, then Austria. Latvia. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for giving me the floor. Um, uh, 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 for me, uh, I uh, also uh, would like uh, uh, just uh, maybe uh, to agree uh, with um, what uh, the Chair uh, uh, of um, the, um, uh, the recommendation drafting group, uh, Emma, already mentioned about uh, the role of, um, uh, of uh, this list to uh, recognize and uh, acknowledge 
manage uh, the work uh, that already uh, has been uh, done, but uh, um, uh, we have also uh, to see um, uh, that uh, there um, is a big difference uh, when uh, we put uh, something in uh, the preamble and uh, when uh, we uh, put uh, just uh, to see um, uh, what work has um, in the annex uh, this list, uh, to see uh, uh, what uh, has been in, um, uh, 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 important uh, for the time of drafting. I think uh, that uh, for a practical that we don't, um, we are not in favor on putting uh, the li uh, list in the annex as uh, it uh, won't make uh, s s um, uh, many um, uh, practical um, uh, uh, additions uh, and uh, value for this uh, do document as we, for example, uh, can uh, see, uh, see also uh, these lists, uh, for example, uh, on the preliminary study uh, on ethics of artificial uh, intelligence drafted by uh, COMEST. There are many uh, th those documents already listed, so it could be already found and uh, then uh, it would, wouldn't be taken for the interpretation of the text. Uh, so. Uh, we would rather uh, think that uh, the annex would uh, not be so necessary for uh, 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 for uh, um, adding some uh, great value to these uh, these um, uh, recommendations, and uh, it's better just maybe um, uh, uh, to don't have these uh, par paragraphs at, at all, uh, than making some additional list. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Morocco and Austria. And please do not repeat, again, if you have anything new, just for the lack of time, Morocco, Al Maghrib, Tfadali, Al Maghrib. Morocco, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I shall be extremely brief. Our position is firm. We are for the suppression of these paragraphs and not putting them in an annex. Because as our colleague from France said, there are legal experts who know these things better than we do. And so perhaps if you were to ask for the opinion of the legal advisor of UNESCO, if you were to ask him what precedents there are, he would probably say that there's no value in putting them in the annex because they will have no legal value. But perhaps we could ask the legal advisor. Thank you, Morocco. I'll give the floor to Austria, followed by Iran. Austria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, I think we don't need the legal advisor. I think um, unless I'm, I'm someone disputes my, my, my legal opinion, but an annex is always an integral part of the instrument. But maybe there are two ways out. Um, if we have an annex to the instrument, why don't we make it very clear and explicit um, that these are the sources of information that uh, on which uh, the ad hoc expert group uh, has drawn its, its uh, I don't know, its conclusions or I don't know, has consulted something very soft um, so we put it somewhere there and we make it clear this is the experts who looked at it and consulted it. So it's very clear that we, as, 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 as the ones who adopt this instrument, have, uh, will not in any way, in way, any way endorse it. That's one way. The other way is that you take up this list in the annex of uh, your report um, that will be sent to the general conference. And that's another way of, of, of um, appreciating the, the, the work that has been done. Um, so these are my two proposals. Either we make clear that this, the annex um, is something that experts have consulted with, and if that's still too problematic, maybe just taking it up in an annex to your report. Thank um, you. Our preference is, as others have said, just to leave the whole four altogether um, for, the, for the reasons outlined. So we have three, op three options, so to say. Thank you, Astria. When I mentioned the annex, I mean the annex of the report of the chair not the instrument. So with that, I'll have, Iran, you have one, take the floor. Then, Excellency, we are not in favor of 
of the annex, the reason is that uh, we do not receive any official uh, the, the amendment for that one. That's one reason. The second reason is that the paragraph number 20 uh, before, is wait, the wait, only dear, one. Wait, dear President of Iran, no, no. Yes. When, when I say the annex of the report, like what we always doing, even for Iran, when you have a point that was not taken in the amendment, but you insisted in it, I reflected in the report. So we will use the same procedure. The deleting of those paragraphs, and it will be reflect, mentioned in the annex of the report of the chair. So we are doing the same thing. There's nothing new. So I want to hear your point of view, uh, dear representative of Iran. Are you with the deletion, or you want to keep the list? Yeah, uh, Excellency, our point is paragraph 20. No, paragraph we're talking about 20. 17 now. I'm going paragraph yeah. by paragraph, 17. Regarding the 17, the, the, no, we are not in a favor of annex, as the, 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 the matter is that annex is the technical issues. And then what is the content is important. The content is not here an appropriate one to go into to annex. So the, the, we always, sometimes we have an annex, but this issue is not an appropriate one to go to annex. Annex is a technical one, and this paragraph and the content is not a technical one. And for this reason, we, we are not in a favor of going the listing here to annex. That's our position, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to, uh, again, Latvia. Do you? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, thank you for giving again uh, the floor. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to, to maybe state that uh, there maybe uh, was a bit uh, of mis misunderstanding, as um, um, maybe um, uh, we um, uh, thought that um, uh, the annex is for uh, the recommendation, uh, not the, the report uh, uh, earlier. Thank you. So it's okay to delete it here and to keep it in the annex of the report, Latvia, just to. Uh, 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 I, I have no strong opinion about the uh, report, but uh, I think uh, I think that uh, um, uh, this list uh, could be just uh, paragraph 17, and and just uh, uh, if uh, uh, for the consensus, it could be uh, uh, removed uh, from you. the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. So saying that, what I think is deleting. I'm going to go paragraph by paragraph. Deleting paragraph 17 and have it in the annex of the report of the chair. Please, if you oppose that, please, if you oppose that, raise your hand. Again, I see I re reflecting the room is there is a lot of member states who are okay so I'm going to go paragraph by paragraph. I thank you all. I see I have consensus in deleting paragraph point of order for Algeria. Algeria, please, what's your point of order? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. There's been a, a request, I don't remember from whom, to get a legal advice whether putting uh, such a list in the annex would make sense. Is it the uh, normal uh, uh, procedure? that is followed or not, if you do not mind calling for an advice, a legal advice. Again, it's, there is, okay, to my understanding, there is no legal issue with that, but to be more, I see I have uh, Austria, Austria, please. Now, indeed, they, uh, dear chair, thank you very much. Indeed, just to confirm what you said, there is no legal issue. Whatever you decide, what you want to take up in your report um, with the, uh, you know, uh, with the approval of us, um, it can be done and it has been done. Um, it's actually exactly what we do if um, we can't get um, any consensus on a text, but one member state feel very strongly to have something reflected. We, uh, it, it's what we do. Uh, it, we put it in the report um, so that this is reflected. And you said it very clearly. I think uh, calling the legal advisor is, is yes. really not uh, necessary. Again. Before I give the floor to, to Morocco, uh, and that's what, what the, before I give the floor to Morocco, that's what I did, you know, if you follow my dear representative of Algeria in the intercessional consultation, in the previous report, and the previous in April, any time when we have a, a, a strong opinion of member state, I reflect it on the report. So member state, as you saw that, you know, this information is to be reflected in the, on the report, 
uh, and with your approval, what it said? Is there, uh, 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 excuse me, Mr. Chairman, is there any Dear representative with, of Algeria, before, excuse me, before you know, so I don't sorry. want to make it like back and forth discussion. As you request, we just checked with the legal advisor and he said it's finally correct. You know, the way I present it can be in the report. Does that cover your concern? From the legal point of view. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you. And I thank, I still have Morocco, please, Morocco, if you have, you no. can have the floor. Shukran, Thank you, Chair. Just to clarify, we requested the advice of the legal advisor because there was an error regarding the proposal. There was a misunderstanding regarding the proposal. What we had understood is that you were proposing to insert paragraph 17 in an annex to the recommendation and not to your report. But now uh, everything is much clearer. Thank you, Chair. Shukran. Shukran Maghrib. Thank you, Morocco. So with that, I have the honor after your agreement and your approval, consensus to approve PP 17. Deleting and having in the uh, the chair report. Go back next to paragraph PP18, please. Okay. According to the same logic, deleting Para. Iran, if you want to raise your hand, please, not in the chat. Okay, I see what's your point. So Iran would like to reflect their point of view on the, paragraph, the report of the chair, please. Noted. Noted, Iran. It's been, it will be reflected there. With the same logic, can we do the same thing with para PP18 to be deleted and reflected in the annex of the chair report? And also the point of view of Iran reflected there in the report in para 18. I see no objection. We have consensus. Para PP18 deleted and removed to the chair in the annex of the chair report. Now, let me see. I think there was 21. I want to go in this order. So with the, the discussion, can we go to? 21, where we have amendment of Russia to delete 21. 21, okay. So because we have the same momentum, the same discussion, everyone is aware. Can I have consensus from member state to do the same thing? Delete PP21 and add it to the annex of the chair report and also reflect Iran point of view in the report to have any objection or we have consensus. I see Canada. Canada, could you let elaborate your objection? Oui, merci, le Président. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. We just have a question. Would it be possible, because this is very important to us, to mention the importance of civil society, non-governmental organizations, and to stop the sentence after our amendment, uh, also including the scientific community, and then uh, delete the rest of the list? Uh, again, just a matter to be consistent. I have no amendment in that regard. 
So I cannot introduce a new amendment. Either we discuss for Canada the, the, the amendment in front of us and the scientific community. So with that, Parce qu'en fait, Monsieur le Pré Dear President, the objective is to um, delete the list. So if we delete the, the list and not the start of the paragraph, I think there would be consensus. We are deleting the whole paragraph, the whole paragraph. Highlight the whole paragraph, please, so he can follow with us. Yeah, this is will be deleted, Canada. I know I understand. There's, I just wanted to, to tell that there would be consensus if we delete the list of the paragraph, but keep the header, which states the importance of the uh, non-governmental associations, uh, professional organizations. But as I understand from the member state, is the whole paragraph to be deleted. All right. Thank you. Okay. I have, is there objection? I have Iran followed by Poland. Iran? Um, then, Excellency, for the clarification, uh, uh, my delegation asked you regarding the process and and the chair mentioned that we go paragraph by paragraph from 17. But now we jump to paragraph 21. I would like to clarify that what happened for paragraph 20, because paragraph 19 and 20, because, because especially the 20 is not, uh, is not in the listing. And then the, that specific paragraph is the only paragraph that focus on the international impact and many the, the delegates would like to. It's very important for many delegates, as the reason mentioned in the room. And then we are strongly request to come back to the paragraph 20. Thank you. Thank you, dear Mr. Iran. Uh, I will come back to it. It just matter, you know, to be uh, having the same momentum because we were discussing. I felt the room are okay with the 17, 18, 21. They are within the same context, and there is amendment from Russia to delete all these three. That's why I will come back to the 19 and 20. Okay, so with that, is there any, I see consensus, but only two countries, they have objection of deleting it, which is Poland, Latvia, I'll give the floor to Poland, Latvia, then the UK, please, Poland. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair and dear colleagues. Uh, that, that was maybe sad what I tried to express. Uh, with that cancellation, finally, we start to be blind for history, which developed, uh, delivered us to the, that momentum when, when we try to conclude and shape the uh, recommendations of art, for artificial intelligence. And because of that, uh, even uh, even uh, consider, uh, even the consideration to remove to the um, uh, report is of course uh, one of uh, consensus solution. It is very um, um, bad from our perspective to um, to do uh, this with this para twenty one. Finally, um, uh, and uh, the proposition came from Canada for, for from us. For us, it was very um, uh, wisdom, and we could support this to keep the first. Ex also, uh, to keep the first expression and uh, stop um, uh, creating the, the um, list, uh, and and keeping this, we do as a people who see the, the the past, present, and the future. That many uh, organizations compete on the ethical standards, and we finally try to create the common sense among the, that competition and tensions uh, between the ethical standards, the technical standards, and finally, the, the chance uh, of, uh, of uh, any economies uh, on the local national ground. Thank you very much. Thank you, Poland. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of uh, Latvia, followed by the UK. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, here, uh, I also uh, wanted uh, just uh, to um, maybe um, and, um, put attention uh, to uh, Canad uh, Canadian um, uh, suggestion, uh, um, because if we look why we delete now uh, this paragraph uh, to add uh, one paragraph uh, with all the listing, uh, which was pr proposed uh, by Russian uh, paragraph 20, relevant frameworks uh, developed by intergovernmental organizations, uh, private sector, professional professional organizations and uh, non-governmental organ organizations, but uh, there is no scientific community listed. Maybe this um, suggestion from Canada uh, could uh, go then uh, to, um, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, Russian um, uh, suggestion uh, to negotiate it further, as uh, we have to look uh, to these uh, paragraphs uh, uh, like uh, to, together um, uh, when we now de delete. Uh, it was a proposal that we uh, will um, discuss it uh, separately without uh, um, uh, adding these lists uh, to specific initiatives and documents. So uh, I would suggest uh, not to miss uh, maybe this opportunity and uh, uh, um, and to add this uh, valuable addition uh, from Canada about scientific community initiatives, which are also very relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see you know, several countries like started with Canada, Poland, Latvia, is not to delete the whole thing, to, lead, to just delete from the listing, just this. So that's under discussion. I'll, go, I'll continue my uh, list with the UK, Austria, then Hungary. UK. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, I think I can uh, be brief as, I, as the colleague from uh, Latvia, I think, made the point very well. Um, we would be content to sort of delete this paragraph, but we think that it would be important to capture Canada's um, edit and, and the sort of part at the top, make sure that that is captured in a in a revised PP20, if that's where we're going. So just to, we would be re relaxed about deleting the paragraph, but want to make sure that Canada's edit and, and the entirety of the top section would be considered in, if we're looking at PP20. Um, that was, that was all, um, thank you. Thank you, so I have now two, Two things, deleting the whole thing and deleting just for the highlighted what it says, such as the triple IEEE global initiatives to the end of the uh, paragraph of AI. With that, I'll continue the discussion. I'll give the floor to the dear representative of Austria, Hungary, then Russia. Austria. Very briefly, just to support what uh, Latvia and UK said, let's just delete the list but take um, the, the, the gist, uh, the, the idea of what we have, the initiative and frameworks by the private sector, uh, NGOs and the scientific community and put it in, 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 in a preamble of paragraph 20, uh, um, working on, on the Russian proposal. And with that, I think you don't need to sort of delete it all and you don't need to put the list in your, in your, in your report. We just, just delete it and sort of, uh, we all understand that uh, the text will then be transferred to um, PP20. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I'll continue my list. I'll give Hungary, followed by Russia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, while I'm very sorry that you know the long lists were <laughs> deleted, I could accept the compromise proposal, which would be based on uh, on uh, PP20. Uh, if we keep something like uh, if we if we keep the ideas in in uh, PP21, but as I see the list mentioned in the PP21, you know, it's, it's not the whole list. There are many other actors, you know, many other international organizations, uh, regional organizations, which should be mentioned also. Uh, so in general, so if we could you know keep this idea, add it to PP20 or perhaps in a separate paragraph and add the, the other intergovernmental organizations, including the regional ones, I, I think that could fly. Thank you. I mean, I would support that and I hope it would fly within the group. Thank you. Thank you, Hungary. I'll give the floor to Russia, followed by Algeria. Russia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. If we understood correctly, the package included all of the various packages, all of the various paragraphs mentioned, including this paragraph. The situation we have in our hands is that uh, the balance we struck with the document has been broken. 
we agreed to these various bodies and their outputs within the UN system being mentioned, including ones beyond the UN system. We're also mentioning various associations, organizations, and what we're also seeing is regular mention being made of NGOs, as well as other organizations such as professional organizations, NGOs as I said, and so on and so forth. Now as our Hungarian colleague said, we're going around in circles again. We're going to basically list everyone and anyone who is working on AI. So we suggest reverting back to our original proposal, which we made some while ago, speaking to Para 20, which uh, struck a balance and referred to all of these various bodies, but in a very general fashion. So if we look at the approach we've taken to this document and the time we have left, we believe that the operative part of this recommendation contains sufficient mention of the uh, sufficient uh, referrals to the multi-stakeholder approach, which uh, will serve as the basis for the implementation of the recommendation when we come to that. This, by definition, is a fantastic opportunity to talk about, to present, to submit all of the various initiatives underway which are mentioned in PP21. Thus, we believe it's worthwhile to revert to the original vision, which we think, we think did garner consensus, or if not consensus, broad-based support from all of the delegations, that sort of package deal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Russia. I'll give the floor to Algeria, followed by Finland, Hungary, then Brazil. Algeria, you have the floor. Ahmed, Fadl. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Following this same approach, and, and we agree with the uh, suggestion by Canada, uh, and as uh, supported by the uh, Austrian delegate, um, that we keep the gist of the paragraph. Uh, why don't we do the same thing with paragraphs 17, 18, 20, and 21, which are at stake here, and which, which uh, the suggestion is to remove them in entirely? Why not keep the gist for each one? For 17, it was the issue of human rights and transnational corporations and other business enterprises. For 18, it was noting also existing frameworks related to the ethics of AI of other intergovernmental organizations and the list such as and so on would be removed and so on. So this keeps the important, uh, the, the gist as, as our respected colleague mentioned it, the gist of the paragraph without having to list uh, specific uh, documents or references. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Algeria. I'll give the floor to Finland, followed by Hungary, then Brazil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I think at this late hour, we are already starting to not realize when we actually agree. Um, I think the, all, the, all the proposals that have been made have been moving to exactly the same direction. Um, that uh, essentially basically means that we, we don't list things, but we have one collection paragraph that, uh, as, as uh, Algerian delegate said, uh, has the gist of, of, uh, of the lists that we delete. And this was the original proposal by Russia. And I think the Russian um, proposal or Russian amendment for paragraph preamble or paragraph 20 is, is a very helpful uh, and a good starting point for that. So, so I think we can agree. And I think I, I, I understand Canada um, and, and their amendment here and I'm kind of emphasizing that the scientific community is very important to mention and we can take that on board. Um, the private sector professional organizations and non-governmental organizations are there already in the Russian proposal for paragraph 20. So, so I think, you know, let's just delete paragraph 21 completely with the understanding that we'll start working on paragraph 20 
um, and add, if necessary, uh, things that are missing. So, so what seems to be missing at the moment is is the scientific community, which is only adding two words to the current version of uh, or the amended version of paragraph twenty, and and we'll we'll be we'll be very close to home uh, with that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Again, I try to be consistent as usual, as much as I can. And this time here, before I continue the floor, I think, you know, to delete PP21, and next move, we'll go to 20, and we open, you know, discussion is to see, you know, as our colleagues from Russia mentioned, we can open it. So please, can you give me that? Again, to be consistent, we know anything we would like it to be added, we can mention it there. So let's delete 21 as whole. And when we go to 20, you know, things can be away. Yep. Is everyone okay with it? Yep. I mean, any concern that, you know, you, you have it in 21, it can't be brought up in 20. Mm -hmm. I see the man in the hot room <laughs> still want to raise his hand. It must be the temperature went down. Hungry, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, no, I just wanted to clarify that perhaps what I said was misunderstood by my, my distinguished colleague from Russia. Uh, this is exactly what I also said, that I think one paragraph uh, dealing by listing the different types of actors, including regional organizations, uh, uh, could be a, a way out. Uh, yeah, that's it. I also mentioned it in the in the chat, uh, and I support my Algerian colleagues' proposal. Thank you, and also the Finnish colleagues' uh, explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we have consensus to delete PP twenty one, and now I'm going to open twenty. Actually, no, no. Let me see nineteen. Because 19, okay, it was important. Let's finish 19, then go to 20. Okay, in 19, I have an amendment by the UK. That's it, only the UK. UK, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, I, I want to say from the outset that um, we are, uh, I think we can suggest a less extensive edit, um, but if I just explain the rationale that we wanted to, to sort of address with our edit here, we felt that it talked about underrepresentation, but it actually was quite a passive paragraph um, in that it talked about paying attention to these countries, but not actually saying to what end. And, and we understood the paragraph to be directed at talking about participation. So. That's why we sort of restructured the sentence um, to, to emphasize this issue of inclusive participation. We are very happy to, um, to work back in uh, the, the specific reference to um, LMICs and LDCs, LLDCs and SIDs if, if that's preferred. And I can make a suggestion of, of a less um, sort of extensive edit in that sense, but, but that was what we wanted to do. We, we felt that it was, it was kind of, um, describing a problem, but not, without really saying what the actual issue was, which is this issue around participation, um, or at least that's how we understood uh, the issue that was, what was that was being um, addressed here. So I don't know if it's helpful. I can put in the chat um, the um, the sort of revised edit, if that's helpful, or I don't know how you how you'd like to how you'd like to proceed. Um, I'm in your hands. Okay, you can send your comment in the, in, the, in the chat, but let me, let me remind our colleagues, you know, I remember you know, during the discussion of the text, one of the amendments that Iran striking those, uh, the LMICs, LDCs, then, you know, the discussion after, through the discussion, we said this is uh, UNESCO's terminology that we use, and we kept them. Again, just to remind our colleagues of, of that, and I think it's in para, Yes, and PP7. Seven. Seven. I'll open the floor, and you can send your text on the chat if you want, so it's easier for this. Okay, I'll give the floor to Brazil. Brazil? 
Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, the Yuki, for, for presenting their amendment. Uh, we, we believe that in some parts it actually improves the, the, the paragraph, but uh, we would not uh, support removing the reference to LMICs, LLDCs, LLDCs, and SIGs. So uh, this part, I think we should keep. Uh, the rest, the rephrasing of the paragraph as it stands, I think it's not bad, actually, the, the rest of the, the amendment. Uh, include, maybe we could say to ensure inclusive participation of LMICs or to, inc to ensure the participation of LMICs included but not limited to LDCs, LLDCs and SPITs in the AI ethics debate. Um, and then the rest we could go along with the, with the proposal of the UK. At the same time, I also believe that this idea of fairness is is is, is important and it's lost in the in the in the British formulation. Uh, so, well, maybe uh, other countries can can speak previously, and then I, I I think a little bit more about this last part of the UK amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. I'll give the floor to St. Vincent. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I would like to make echo to what has been said by my colleague from Brazil. We do not, uh, uh, we don't want to uh, remove LMICs and SEEDs and LDCs. But I think uh, uh, UK, United Kingdom proposed another text, maybe in the chat. Can I see the proposed text? I, I saw something new, maybe. Again. Can, can we see the new text, please? OK. Can Thank you hold? You. Can you hold? Meanwhile. I'll give the, while they're preparing, I'll come back to you, St. Vincent. I'll give the floor while they're preparing the, the text. I'll give the floor to Iran, then I'll come back to you. Iran? Thank you, Excellency. In the same line with Brazil, we also believe that the LMICs should be in the focus. But the point is that there are two keywords here that are important for my my delegations one is the participation and another the, the, the point is capacity building so the focus of the, part of the, the, the the paragraph should be on on this groupings because and we have to help them to, to not the left behind but both participation and also supporting for capacity building is important and then we fully support the paragraph we can go with the original one and then we can go with the brazilian colleague but the two concept the two concepts should be remain one is a participation and then helping them to to have enough capacity building for the process thank you thank you iran before i go to the next speaker I'll give back to San Vincent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to, send, to thank uh, United Kingdom for the uh, new proposal. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, LMICs and LDCs and LDCs and seats are uh, there. And uh, we can we can accept the text, but I, uh, I didn't finish yet uh, to put a new text, Mr. Chairman. We need some time.
Okay. And could you clean it? Yes. Okay, I have a suggestion from the UK to keep the original text. Can we see the original text, please? Chair, maybe, I, th I don't think that's quite what we suggested. We, oh. What I wanted to say was we are, we are okay to go with the original text. Um, we felt that our proposal here was, was kind of clarifying, but if, if colleagues don't think that this captures the, the meaning that was intended in the paragraph, we can we can be flexible um, and go back to the original text. So very much only if if colleagues see this sure. as helpful. Um, otherwise, we we can we. Can. Oh, thank you, UK. So we have a proposal to keep the original text, or I mean, the UK are flexible to have the original text. I'll continue with Saint Vincent. Then I'll continue my list. Saint Vincent, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am fine with the original text, actually, but uh, we are flexible to uh, to have inclusive partic participation. This is good proposal. Uh, and uh, I prefer to put, uh, to keep, uh, I am lost, Mr. Chairman. I have to see it in depth, maybe uh, my colleague from uh Jamaica. I'll, I'll give the floor to the next speakers, and you can take the floor again if you would like. I'll continue my list. Jamaica, so you have an option to keep the original text. And I Thank see... You. Oh, sorry. Continue. You have, you have the floor, Jamaica. No, no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I will be very helpful because the UK intervened just at the point I raised my hand to say I was having a struggle trying to understand what we were fixing in the original text. In its ordinary and literal meaning, it is fine. And I support entirely the retention of the text. Thank you. Thank you. And I also have the support of Mexico, Iran, Brazil, Poland, Namibia, Cuba, Malaysia, Austria, Latvia. So I thank everyone. So we have consensus on PP19, the original text, as it's shown in front of us. So PP19 approved, and I hit it again because the previous one I didn't hit it, so two times. Okay, now we go to 20, PP20. I have an amendment from Russia. First of all, I'll give the floor to the representative of Russia to elaborate on their amendment for PP20. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps at this late hour, this is going to elicit a smile from you, but in light of the latest amendments, we, suggested, uh, we suggest deleting this paragraph all of it, in fact, as we discussed earlier following Austria's proposal, if our memory serves us right. There was consensus on that. We're not opposed to this document being reflected in your report as a non-consensus para, along with other paras, but if we are going to delve into this para, we're once again going to upset the balance, the balance we struck in terms of what is included in the document and what isn't. We've strayed away from consensus documents adopted by the UN system being mentioned to references to non-consensual documents, other documents, national policies, frameworks, and so on and so forth. Could you mute? Oh, sorry. Okay, you can continue, Russia. Yes, thank you. So that's the thrust of our proposal. Now, I cannot say that this is a strong point for us, but uh, we believe that this paragraph creates an imbalance in the doc document. On the whole, when of the view that mentioning 
these various organizations, bodies, frameworks in the preambular part of the document, if that's really a key goal for us that we're trying to achieve by the implementing this recommendation. Because we actually pay sufficient attention to all of this in the operative part of the recommendation. Therefore, we suggest reverting to our original proposal and have all those four paragraphs reflected in the Chairman's report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russia. Okay, I'll start my list by giving the floor to Finland, followed by Mexico. Finland. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think, like, originally and initially, we were happy with uh, deleting uh, all of this ex um, in addition or including uh, the PP20. However, in the in the discussion, it, it became quite clear that uh, not in addition to adding the, the actual lists uh, into the chair's report as an annex, there, there is quite a lot of interest in, in, in just at least mentioning these different types of actors and these different types of initiatives. Um, so, so I think the better, better option would be to start um, uh, editing this text. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we can, we can do that rel relatively quickly now that we have gone through all the lists and all the paragraphs that, uh, that preceded. So we, we have a good idea of what was there initially and, and just make the, the kind of uh, acknowledgements of the types of uh, organizations, types of initiatives and frameworks that, um, that we, the, we deleted a specific list uh, the, the specific lists of that we, we, we deleted already. Um, and so I, I would propose that we'll start from, from what we have in front of us uh, on screen, the PP20 as amended by Russia. Um, and, and, and in the outset, I would, I would just comment that um, in, in this context now, um, what we would need to see there um, would be uh, in, as, in addition to relevant frameworks, we would maybe maybe need to mention initiatives, which is a more wider term. And, and then I'm sure that my uh, Canadian colleague would be adding the scientific community there on the list. So I would I would like to kind of uh, preemptively uh, support that addition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I like your efficiency, Finland. I really do. I'll give the floor to Mexico, followed by our dear colleagues from Canada. Mexico, Javier, you have the floor. Gracias, President. Thank you, Chair. On this occasion, to support the amendments put forward by the Russian delegation, we believe that these elements are key. The mention of the various different actors that play a role in the development of artificial intelligence. We would prefer to leave this amendment. And we should recall that we didn't uh, continue discussing retaining the first few sentences of PP21 because we were going to mention this in PP20, so we prefer to keep uh, Russia's original amendment. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to the dear representative Canada, followed by Iran. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I'd like to thank our colleagues from Mexico and Finland. We believe it's important to retain paragraph 20 with the amendment, the second amendment uh, proposed by Russia, and with our amendment proposed in PP21 on the scientific uh, community. However, we can't support the first uh, Russian proposal because it's important to talk about policies and initiatives uh, relative to ethics. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'll give the continue the floor with uh, Iran, followed by Hungary. Iran. Iran, you have the floor. Dear representative of Iran. Excellency, thank you. Thank you very much for the floor, Excellency. Ex Iran, you are muted. Yes, Excellency, can you hear me? Uh, Excellency, like the previous speaker, Mexico, we also supported the Russian amendment as they are key 
in the AI cycle. Thank you. Thank you, Iran. Okay, so please, now, if you, if you are, wanted to keep 20, and you have a specific input, and please, Secretariat, can you reflect the uh, Canadian amendment, it was in 21, on 20. So, once you take the floor for 20, please be specific what you want to add or remove on the Russian amendment. Hungary, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so yes, I think the idea behind deleting the all, all the other paragraphs was to keep the the main message that uh, the UNESCO process is not an isolated one, and then UNESCO and also our member states are aware of the fact that there are so many other initiatives. So I think uh, if we want to have consensus, then we have to find a compromise proposal or compromise solution on this paragraph. I have a proposal because what I see uh, that in the current paragraph, there are certain elements missing. Yes, the Canadian uh, 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 proposal is, is, is one uh, that is important. Uh, and as you remember, I think paragraph yeah, PP17 mentioned UN entities also, like the UN Secretary General, you know, uh, the Human Rights Council, Special Reporters, the ITU, and many others. So I believe it would be important to mention them also in a very general way. Let me mention, let me read my, my proposal. Uh, and instead of frameworks, I think it's better to use initiatives. So after the term Russia, um, in brackets, you could start um, uh, relevant initiatives uh, can I read it or? Yes, or? yes, you can. Okay. So relevant initiatives by, or maybe initiatives by relevant UN entities and uh, uh, other intergovernmental, including regional organizations. Uh, so um, yeah, by relevant UN entities uh, and other intergovernmental including regional organizations outside the UN system, as well as uh, uh, of the private sector, if you don't want to repeat initiatives, private sector, professional organizations, NGOs, and the scientific community. And I think in that case, we uh, cover all the relevant actors. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll give the floor to the UK, followed by Latvia, then Germany. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, I think that perhaps one of the um, suggestions by um, my Hungarian colleague of, of including regional um, organisations might have been missed. Um, I think we in the UK would also support that. I can't remember quite now where it was. I don't know if, the Hungarian, um, if, if Hungary might want to come in again. OK, I think it was that. Um, and uh, we would also support the addition of the scientific community um, and, and can work with, with the sort of structure that's being suggested here. Um, we, we wouldn't like to see the deletion of other frameworks um, ahead of related to the ethics, I don't think, um, because it, it feels like focusing only on policies would be quite a sort of limited approach. Um, but otherwise, uh, we're, we're, we can, we're comfortable um, with how, it, how it's starting to look. Thank you. I'll give the floor to the dear president of Latvia, followed by Germany, then Russia. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also very much support adding um, um, uh, scientific community and um, uh, also uh, um, regional uh, organizations. But uh, here I think it's, it's very important uh, to uh, not to delete frameworks. We, we just uh, have to keep both as, uh, for example, if we look to the paragraphs uh, deleted, uh, they talk about uh, many is initiatives and frameworks uh, like uh, uh, so um, uh, after initiatives uh, I think uh, 
and frameworks uh, could be inserted now. So, Latva, you are done. So I can continue with the next speaker. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I just, oh, oh, <laughs> yes, what I said about uh, real, uh, frameworks, uh, they ha have to be uh, added uh, after sure. initiatives. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. <laughs> thank you. I'll wait, you know, until, you know, I hear the floor, then I'll come back to the, the, the other framework. But let me hear the floor regarding this edition. I have Germany, Russia, Brazil, then Hungary. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, for support by the proposal uh, from Hungary, but I think the editing is still ongoing and, and unfortunately not quite complete. The sentence as it stands now makes no sense. Um, initiatives need to go after frameworks and then related to AI and then related to AI needs a different spot. Related to AI might, uh, related to the ethics and regulation of AI technologies needs to be at the end of the sentence, if I, I read this correctly. Otherwise, it does not make much sense. Yes, this is precisely it. And we also so, uh, support the inclusion of, of frameworks uh, and other frameworks and initiatives. That would be our point. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. I'll give the floor to Russia, followed by Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for giving me the floor. Initially, we were going to dedicate a paragraph to each distinct aspect. And the terms that we used to refer to our relationship with these principles. Here, we have mentioned these frameworks, and we're aware of these frameworks. That's what we mentioned at the beginning of the paragraph. This could have legal uh, consequences. We don't fully understand. Is this an initiative that is under discussion, or have they been adopted as part of international um, procedures that involve commitment, legal or other, uh, by member states? Here, what we're seeing is a situation where we're putting all our eggs in one basket. and we're forgetting some elements. Now, we remain flexible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Russia. I'll give the floor to Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, well, Brazil agrees with the, the proposal as it is now. We have actually just proposed another alternative just to be more easily readable because I think uh, it's a bit long, but uh, we can go along with this proposal too. Uh, I think the, the, the idea is, is to include everything that was mentioned in the other paragraphs that we have just deleted as, as the Russian colleague just said. And I think that's, that's really the idea with avoiding listing uh, all the, the documents that we want to refer to. And uh, from my perspective, actually, it does not uh, really create any legal consequences because actually the 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 text is very is very is very light it just says conscious of the many existing so it doesn't mean anything is not binding any anything so i don't uh, i don't agree that uh, it creates problems for us and uh, i think the idea is just to 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 avoid the listing because we thought that it was not exhaustive uh, but in any case, we can go along with that, or uh, uh, we have uh, we have pasted one proposal too of uh, alternative drafting for the same paragraph. But uh, we don't insist on that because I think it's just a more formal uh, question. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. I'll give the floor to Morocco, Al Maghreb, 
Hungary, Poland, Argentina. Thank you, Chair. We support this suggestion of the Russian Federation. So we support the proposal of the Russian Federation, and we share their opinion about other frameworks. We need to identify which other frameworks we mean. Also, we suggest using relevant, because anything that comes under the umbrella of the United Nations is international organizations who play an important role, so we cannot neglect them. We could put that before private sector or before professional organizations. The word relevant could be inserted there. But actually, we support removing it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Morocco. I'll give the floor to Hungary, Poland, Argentina. And thank you, Mr. Chair, once again. And I hope I won't need to take the floor uh, one more time. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful for my Russian uh, colleagues' uh, uh, constructive approach and also flexibility. Uh, just one remark um, or, or uh, <clears throat> statement on the on, on his point, what he made about you know, the legal consequences. We should not forget that this is a non-binding document, so you know, nothing will have legal consequences. But uh, I hope that the uh, uh, constructive approach uh, shown by my colleague, distinguished colleague, will be will lead to uh, uh, final solution. Thank you. Thank you, Poland. Okay, I'll try to, I'm trying to reach consensus with the text in front of us, please. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it to Poland, followed by Argentina. Um, I, uh, uh, thank you for the floor. I would like to um, say in this way, to, to try to find, to find the consensus. From the Poland, uh, we would like to very thanks uh, to the colleagues from the Russia, from the UK, from the Germany and Hungary and Brazil, uh, uh, the colleagues uh, who tried to propose their um, text as it is uh, edited. And uh, what we see on the screen now, uh, that is a um, uh, text who, who, uh, which uh, Poland could uh, support, and the, the, for us it, it, it is a, a compromise. And, uh, and, and saying two things: uh, other framework, frameworks, it's a framework of uh, type of thinking and, and shaping the the the, the reality, uh, uh, especially con con uh, contextualization of any ethical standards and technical standards related to artificial intelligence. And because of that, um, referring to the Russian colleagues' doubt. Uh, it, 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 it is a base of work, what, what we have on the table, and we shape the recommendation. This is the instrument, non-binding, finally, also, but uh, the, we, here we work on the preamble, like a reason of our working. And we, it, it, we think that we can be calm, uh, don't, don't uh, thinking that it's a legal instrument. Thank you very much, and legal bad consequences. Thank you. Thank you. Poland, I'll give the floor to Argentina. Please, Argentina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to point out that maybe this paragraph uh, that we are reading here uh, on the screen would read uh, a little bit more easily if we include um, the word carried out or implemented after the word initiatives. Um, that's all uh, what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, after initiative, let me go. Okay, implemented. I'll give the floor to Brazil, followed by Latvia. Brazil. Thank you, Chair, and sorry for, for coming back again in, in the same debate, but it's just because I, uh, as I said, I, I made a, an alternative proposal that I think actually reads better. And, uh, and, and I, I said that I saw that the UK said agreed, agreed with that. So that's just for this reason that I wanted to, to see if there is uh, support for this proposal, because it actually keeps the same spirit of what, uh, what we're discussing here, but in a way that is more easily readable, I think. So, so if there, I may, yes. 
Okay. I, Again, I, I put in the chat. In the chat, I'm, I'm not no, sure. No, no, okay, it's just, okay. Uh, I really don't want you to. to no, 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 it's okay. No, it's not complicating. Again, dear <laughs> yeah. colleagues, dear colleagues, dear member states, after maybe what two months, please, I beg you, no amendment in the chat, so I can follow. To me, I only see hands in Latvia. You wanna? Ha it's okay. We will put it. Uh, so the UK, please raise your hand. I'll give you the floor, and I say I have a better text. So read it, or then Apologies. we can go. Yes, it's uh, then I'll come back. It's not the UK's amendment. It was, oh. it was Brazil. So, oh, <laughs> okay, because I, I heard the UK was so supporting. So now, Brazil has an amendment, different text. And I'd like to present it. Yes, dear it would be. Mayra, dear President of Brazil, you have yes. the honor Thank to you. present your text. In the yes, screen, exactly. not in the chat. <laughs> Yes. In any case, it's already there in the screen. It would just, uh, it would just come after, uh, well, after other frameworks as, and initiatives as well. No, and after frameworks, actually. It would come after framework. After framework. So we go to yes. the... No, and no, no, until... No, no. And then it after has to... After frameworks. Okay. Does that reflect, Myra? Yes, but then we would need to continue also with professional organizations, non-governmental organizations. Yes, exactly. That's it. It's the same meaning, it's just a different phrasing. Okay. Thank you. I'll continue my list. So this is... I'll continue my list with Latvia, followed by the representative of Russia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted um, um, to pay attention to the word um, proposed uh, by dear colleagues of Argentina about implemented as uh, we talk about various initiatives in various uh, phrases uh, uh, which may uh, um, still uh, um, uh, not be implemented, uh, like developed further. And so so, so I think uh, this uh, um, uh, to make broader scope, uh, this word should be um, uh, should not be um, inserted um, uh, as, uh, as there, uh, in, in, in this paragraph about the Brazil proposal. It seems very uh, uh, like uh, <laughs> the proposal uh, made um, uh, already just a different wording. Uh, I think uh, nothing is uh, missing from uh, the first uh, um, side. So uh, I have no opinion, <laughs> which um, uh, strong opinion about which uh, variant uh, should be accepted. Thank you. Thank you, Latvia. I'll give the floor to the dear president of Russia. Russia, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just in order to speed up the process on this paragraph, we would like to voice our comments regarding the original text, as we can see it up on the screen. I'm just going to go through the text introducing our proposed amendments and if they're agreeable to delegations, then uh, we'll be in agreement. Conscious of the many existing national policies. Other frameworks and initiatives elaborated by relevant UN entities, comma, intergovernmental organizations, Comma, including regional organizations, comma, as well as those by the private sector, and so on and so forth. Uh, UN entities, не во всех случаях представляют. UN entities does not always refer to intergovernmental organizations. After all, we're talking about everything related to the UN in this instance. Also we're not always referring to implementation. I mean, some of these are just initiatives, especially if implemented refers to initiatives launched by the private sector, professional organizations, NGOs, and the scientific community. It's possible that they're not at the implementation stage yet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Russia. Let's make sure we see the Russia suggestion and remove the Argentina and initiatives, please. Mr. Chairman, I do apologize, just to clarify, including regional organizations, comma, as well as, instead of the word and, we should have as well as. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll give the floor. See, Hungary, Hungary, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and and I'm also grateful to my Russian colleague for the <clears throat> for improving the text. Uh, uh, he made some uh, valid points. So, uh, from Hungary, we are ready to accept uh, the the version which is on the screen now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can can we yes highlight? Can we have can we have consensus? I only have five minutes. Can we have consensus on the highlighted screen? Is there any objection? Okay, so please, can you clear everything? Just keep the one, the highlighted. Delete everything. I thank everyone, the Russian, everyone participate, the UK, Brazil, Canada, so PP20, we have consensus approved. I have a proposal, we stay until nine, we only have six. We can stay until nine? No, I don't see people are happy with that. Okay, so we are reaching at the end of our day. Uh, tomorrow we presume at one o'clock with paragraph 22. With paragraph 22, we have six uh, paragraphs left in the preamble. Then we will move to the uh, adapting the document as whole after we prepare the, the rest of the six paragraphs. Tonight you will receive until para 21 and we'll take it from there tomorrow. Have a wonderful night, and see you tomorrow at one. Thank you everyone for their flexibility and their uh, positive impact, and their, again, and their constructive input. Thank you all, and good night. Have a lovely night. On behalf of the interpreters, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Trevor. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll Shukran. Shukran,